want to come before y'all today. My name is Brother Nate. My reader. Today is Brother Tobias. We here at Disciples of Christ. I want to thank y'all for coming today and allowing me to stand before you all. Also, anybody that's tuned in, thank you for tuning in. And want to come today uh, with the Word of God and just make sure you got your spiritual ears on and make sure you're ready to go through the Word of God today. Uh, once again, like I said last time, I'll probably say it every time, that as a kid, I saw standing before people bringing the gospel. I just thank the Lord that I ain't in the church bringing the gospel, waiting on the guy to get on the organ and start playing that hypnotized music so y'all can start shouting and catching the Holy Spirit. I'm glad I ain't doing that type of teaching. I thank the Lord for allowing me to wake up in the truth and bring the gospel the right way. So what we want to do is today, brothers and sisters, we want to go through the Word of God and deal with a very touching subject. And that subject is love, brothers and sisters. A lot of people that are not in the truth uh, get fed, you know, a lot of nonsense when it comes to this gospel. Uh, a lot of people under the under the mindset that the love of God is just given freely to anybody, no matter what you do. And what we got to do, brother, is we got to go through the Word of God and get understanding and make sure we know that your love that comes from, comes from the Father and the Son is based on condition. Everything that the Lord does is based on conditions. If you're thinking that you can do anything you want to do and you're still going to be loved, brothers and sisters, we got to go through the Word of God and see that even in the Old Testament, even now today, there are consequences for your actions. And you can't be cut off from that love. But we're going to touch on some scriptures and see what a lot of people like to say all the time. Y'all know the famous one, for God so love the world. Well, we're going to look at that and we're going to find out how did he love the world? Did he love the world? Did he love you and your sin? Did he love you uh, uh, with the mindset of thinking it's okay for two men to lay with each other? Does he love you with the mindset of you thinking that it's too uh, okay for two women to lay with each other? Does he love that? Does he love the world in that sense? Or does he just, is he talking about the creation, mankind, and giving, giving mankind a chance to come back to him? Is that what he's speaking of? Because if you think that you can do anything you want to, and get away with it, he gonna love you no matter what. You got a one-way ticket straight to the lake of fire. So what we need to do, brothers and sisters, we need to get in the Word of God. We gonna open this thing up, we gonna pick it up. And John, chapter three and verse 16. And look at one of the major things that everybody always quotes. Even in the truth, you try to bring people to truth and let them know they gotta keep the law, statutes, and commandments. Oh, that law is done away with. We don't got to keep the law no more. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Well, let's dive into that. Let's get understanding on this. Brother Tobias, when you get it, go and pick it up. John 3 and verse 16. For God so loved the world uh -huh. that he gave his only begotten son. Go ahead. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, uh -huh. but have everlasting life. Okay, so right off the bat, we got a condition here. And just so you know, the title of this lesson is called Conditional Love. The key to life everlasting. Conditional love, the key to life everlasting. So what the book says is, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe it. That's a condition right there. You got to believe. But is it that you just going to believe and say, Okay, well I believe he died on the cross, now I just believe. Is that it? It said, Whoso believe on him shall not pass but have everlasting life. So, what we got to find out, brothers and sisters, is he talking about the world? If he's just talking about the world, then that means anything you do, you can get away with it, and you're good. All the sins, all the different mindsets that, that are in the world, if that's what he's talking about, then we good. But we're going to understand something, that from the beginning, he had to die. So he couldn't have been talking about all this nonsense that's going on right now. Let's go to Revelation 13 and 8. Let's go look at it. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 8. And this is talking about the time when the beast... Going to get the power to rule this world for 42 months, which we know is three and a half years. And this is also explaining what people he's going to come against and who he's going to give this mark. So Revelation 13 and 8, and go ahead and read, brother. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. All that dwell upon the earth that shall worship him. This beast, which is given power by the dragon, go ahead. Whose names are not written in the book of life of Who's, the Lamb. Uh-huh. Their names are not written in the bite, uh, uh, the book of life of the Lamb. From where, brother? Slain from the foundation of the world. Slain from where? The foundation of the world. That means he was slain from the beginning. That's right. So, in the beginning, brothers and sisters, it was only two people here. Right? It was two people here. Yeah. 
So before they even came, he was already slain. So how is it that he loved the world and all this stuff that's going on? He's talking about the creation, mankind. So he, had, he already had a plan set up for you to come back. That's what he's talking about. And we're going to find out because in some other scriptures as you read on, he's going to say love not the world. But the book just said he loved the world. But he's not talking about that, brothers. He's talking about the inhabitants that are in this world, which is mankind. So let's go to 1 John 4. 1 John chapter 4, we're going to pick it up at verse 7. It's another line they always like to, like to use, and I had to go find this in the scriptures. I was like, well, since they say it all the time, it must be in here. And so sure enough, brothers and sisters, it's in here. And when we hear it, y'all going to understand what I'm talking about. 1 John, John chapter 4, pick it up at verse 7, brother. Beloved, uh -huh. let us love one another. Go ahead. For love is of God. Uh huh. And everyone that loveth is born of God. Go ahead. And knoweth God. Uh huh. He that loveth not, knoweth not God. Right, so hold on. He that loveth not, knoweth not God. What is his love we talking about? As we go on, it's going to explain itself. But he's not talking about you loving him but with lip service. This love is actually talking about an action that you have to do. All right? Finish that out, brother. For God is love. There's the famous word right there. Oh, the Lord wouldn't drop the towels in 9 11. He just wouldn't do that. The Lord wouldn't bust them uh, levers in New Orleans. No, nah, the Lord wouldn't do that. God is love. I can do what I want to do. God is love. No matter what I do, God is love. This is the mindset of the world. That's why it's so important for us to deal with this today because a lot of people are on the way to the lake of fire because they got to understand what it, no, I, I, can't even, I can't say understand it. They got, they're under the belief that anything they do, they're covered by this love. But we're going to see that the Lord is going to separate them, or separate not only them, but us from the world. His love is going to be actually defined in a more better term than what we're seeing right here. But off, right off the bat, if you just look at it, then you just roll with it and say, God is love, I can do anything I want to. And then a lot of the pastors just sit up here and take these scriptures and they give it to the people at their church. And this is why they're falling off. This is why adultery is committed. This is why robbery is committed. Stealing and killing is going on. Because ain't nobody being told what this love is. The book tell you love is what? Keeping the full commandments, right? Right. All right. Let's go to Romans 10 and 8. Let's go check another famous scripture. Another famous scripture that, that is said by the word of faith preachers. Y'all know who they are. Y'all know these word of faith preachers. They come in all different shapes, colors, and sizes. Y'all know exactly who they are. Romans chapter 10 and verse 8. I want y'all to pay attention to chapter, uh, verse 8 right here. Go and pick it up, brother. But what saith it? Uh -huh. The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth. The word is near thee, even in your mouth. Go ahead. And in thy heart. Uh huh. That is, the word of faith which we preach. That's right. The word of faith we, which we preach is what? Christ dying on the cross. You believing on him, taking part in what it is you're supposed to do to get everlasting life. That's the faith. Faith without works is dead, so you can believe all you want to, but if you ain't got no works, it's useless. Go ahead and read, brother. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth uh -huh. the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, Go ahead. thou shalt be saved. Skip down to verse 13. I know y'all know that. That's, that's very familiar because, the, hold on, before we go on, it says, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart, that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So that from that point right there, in the in the in the major, the, uh, or just in the Sunday church alone, this mindset makes you believe that all you got to do is confess with your mouth, and you good. That's right. I was one of them, but we are gonna give you something a little more defined as we drop down to verse thirteen. Verse thirteen, and go ahead, bro. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. Wait a minute. So who whosoever shall come to the front of the church at altar call and get on your knees and start spitting out your mouth and start foaming on the floor and just call them Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Call them Jesus, Jesus, until you start foaming. I remember that. There was a lot of kids when I was growing up in church. They used to call us uh, 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 up for altar call and they would say, call on Jesus, baby. Just call him. Just call him. I can never understand that. I never understood. I thought he was deaf. <laughs> I never understood why I got to sit up here and call and just keep calling until I start spitting out the mouth. That ain't what he's talking about, brothers and sisters. When you call on him, we're going to look at the book and see what it say uh, uh, regarding calling upon him. Go and finish that verse. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord Come shall on. be saved. Shall be saved. Now, let's go look in the Old Testament and let's see who it is we calling on. Let's go to Psalms 145. 
Psalm 145. And pick it up at verse. Verse 8. And go ahead, brother. The Lord is gracious. The Lord is gracious. And full of compassion. Full of compassion. Come on. Slow to anger. Uh-huh. And of great mercy. Go ahead. The Lord is good to all. The Lord is good to all. Come on. And his tender mercies are uh -huh. over all his works. That's right. Drop down to verse 14 and come on. The Lord upholdeth all that fall. So we just going through all the things that the Lord do. Because I want um, I'm setting you up. I want you to understand how the Lord is now. Okay, so when, when we get to the part about who he loves, I don't want you thinking that he evil. Now we get the part of that he say, what, the Lord is gracious, full of compassion, slow to anger, great mercy. He good to all and his tender mercies are over all his works. So whatever he can't do, it can't be wrong. Go ahead and read, brother. Where you at? 15? 15. Come on. The eyes of all wait upon thee. Uh-huh. Thou givest them their meat in due season. Go ahead. Thou openest thine hand mm -hmm. and satisfiest the desire of every living thing. Every living thing. Go ahead. The Lord is righteous in his own ways. Now the book says he righteous in all his ways. Go ahead. And holy in all his works. And holy in all his works. Come on. The Lord is near unto all them that call upon him. Now didn't we just see it early in Romans what it said? The word is near thee. Remember I said, y'all remember verse 8? Right. It said the word is near thee. In verse 7, who got, who got to go up to heaven? Who got to go below in the ground to, uh, to bring Christ unto him? But it said back in the Old Testament the Lord is near thee. Go ahead and read, bro. To all that call upon him in truth. Hold on. To all that do what? Call upon him, right? In truth. So if you call, in what? Truth. In truth. So that's how you call upon him. In truth. But let's see what this truth is right quick. I ain't got this in my lesson, but let's go look at it right quick. Let's go see the truth is right quick. Keep your finger here. We're going to come right back. Go to John 17 and 17 right quick. Let's go see what this truth is. How you going to call upon him in truth? John 17 and 17. We're going to come right back. But it says, the Lord is near unto all, or not unto all that call upon him, to all that call upon him, upon him in truth. Go ahead and read. Sanctify them through thy truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. What is thy truth? Thy word is Wait true. Wait a minute. So you mean to tell me the commandments is the truth? God's word is true. That's what it is? God's word. That's what it's talking about when you call upon a brother and sister. It's not talking about coming up to the altar. And doing a dance and waiting on the, 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 the choir director, which we know might be kind of. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We ain't talking about him. Mm -hmm. Every time I wait on him to get on the organ and, and, and start hyping up the pastor, and then once he starts soothing you with that hypnotizing music for you to start, uh, 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 they, they make the altar call, then you come to the altar and you get down there and start getting on your knee. Then you got that missionary with that white hat on, and she get behind you. Hey, baby, I don't know what's going on, but you ready to give your life to Christ? Call him, baby. Call him, baby. Call him, baby. <laughs> Call him. Then it start off real slow. Next thing you know, you done start spitting. I ain't never did it. I seen it. I'm just letting you know, I never did it. I used to be peeking like this here. I hope they don't come bother me. Man, I used to hope they ain't come bother me. But that's what it's talking about. That word is true, brothers and sisters. So now let's go back over to Psalm and let's finish that. Verse 19. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He will fulfill what? The desire of them that fear him. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. So you got to fear the Lord. Come on. He also will hear their cry. Uh-huh. He's going to hear their cry. Go ahead. And will save them. And will save them. So what it said earlier, if you call upon the Lord, thou shalt be saved. But we saw, we saw how he's going to be saved, right? Through the word. Go ahead and read, brother. The Lord preserveth all them that love him. The Lord preserveth all them that what? Love him. That's a condition right there. That's another condition. He preserved them that love him. Go ahead and read. But all the wicked will he destroy. All the wicked he going to destroy. So here we go, brother. You got somebody on this side that's going to, the Lord going to preserve, which is saved. You got some people on this side that he going to destroy. All right. Let's go look at it a little further. Let's go on to John 14. John chapter 14. We're going to start at verse 14. And let's see what Christ is talking about right here. John 14 and 14. And go ahead. If you shall ask anything in my name. If you ask anything in my name, go ahead. I will do it. So that sounds like off the bat that somebody can take this right here and, and have a whole sermon off of it. They can take this and turn this into prosperity and everything. Matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's Mark, Mark 20, Mark 20, Mark 14 or something. About the, uh, I can't remember, but I remember it was a scripture that we used to say in the, uh, in the, in the Sunday church. You know, believe and confess. Not, not, not the confessing uh, about when they, um, the, the fig tree. You know, you call things that be not as though they were, and you know, you call the mountain to move and stuff out the way. You know, all you got to do is call it. But when you see stuff like this, you're thinking that if you ask anything in my name, I would do it. But what is the condition that's set after this? What does it say, brother? 
Verse 15. I pray not that thou. 15. 14 to 15. I was looking at something else. Excuse me. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. So 14 it says, if you ask anything in my name, I would do it. 15 it says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Now let's see what he's going to do if you keep his commandments. Go ahead. And I will pray the Father. And I will pray the Father. He shall give you another comfort. He shall give you another comfort. Go ahead. That he may abide in you forever. That he may abide with you forever. So brother and sister, pay attention to what it's saying. He's saying, if you love me, keep my commandments, then I'm going to do something for you. That's right, that's a condition. In order for you to get what it is that he got for you, you got to do what he tell you to do. That's right. Mm -hmm. That don't sound like, I mean, it's freely given. His son was given for everybody. But still, in order for you to get this everlasting life that it was talking about in 316, you got to keep the commandment. So where we at? Keep reading, brother. 16? 17. 17. Go ahead. Even the spirit of truth, uh -huh. whom the world cannot receive. Go ahead. Because it seeth him not. Mm -hmm. Neither knoweth him. Go ahead. But ye know him. For he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Come on. I will not leave you comfortless. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Uh-huh. Yet a little while. Go ahead. And the world seeth me no more. Mm -hmm. But ye see me, because I live. Go ahead. Ye shall live also. Come on. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, mm -hmm. and ye in me, and I in you. 21, come on. He that hath my commandments. He that hath my commandments. And keepeth them. And keepeth them. He it is that loveth me. So if you keep his commandments, you love, him. you love it. That's right. Go ahead and read. And he that loveth me uh -huh. shall be loved of my father. So he that loved me shall be loved of my father. Mm -hmm. So if you love me and do what I say and keep my commandments, you, that means you love me. And then my father going to love you. Correct. It's not, just, it's not just like you do what you want to do and I'm going to love you. No, you got to do this, then I'm going to love you. That's right. These are conditions. Go ahead and read, bro. And I will love him. Uh-huh. And will manifest myself. To him. So he's going to show himself to you through the understanding, reveal through the word of God. And that's how we start to understand this word. Because we done turned back to him, start doing what he said. Now we're looking forward to the coming of the Lord. Go ahead and read, brother. Judah saith unto him, uh -huh. not a scary. Go ahead. Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us? So how are you going to manifest yourself unto us? Go ahead. And not unto the world. And not unto the world. Go ahead. Jesus answered and said uh -huh. unto him. If a man love me, if a man love me, he will keep my words. He will keep my words, and my father will love him. And my father will love him. Conditions. Go ahead. And we will come unto him. Uh huh. And make our abode with him. This morning I was studying the word, and uh, man, I tell you, when you pray for the understanding of the Holy Spirit, man, the Lord will give it to you. And it hit me so clear because I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. When you were just reading it, you, you, you looking at it as okay. We will come unto him and make our bowl with him. Meaning, okay, we're going to get the understanding. We're just going to be with him. You know what I'm saying? He'll be able to understand this word of God. But no, no, that, that's what it means. That's part of it. It's a long prophecy. Let's go look at it. Let's go to Revelation 21. This ain't in the lesson, but we got to go see how he's going to buy with you. Revelation 21, and pick it up at verse 1. And then drop down to 3. And go ahead. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Uh huh. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed. Go ahead. Away, and there was no more sea. Right. So this is at the end, after judgment day and everything. Mm -hmm. When the Father gets ready to come down, John is now seeing. It says, "I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea." Verse three. What does it say? And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, "Go ahead. Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. The tabernacle of God is with men. Go ahead. And He will dwell with them. Now." This is how he's going to abide with you. That's right. He's giving you, he's giving you the understanding at this time while you're on this earth, but he's telling you, you get the double fold after the resurrection, the Father gonna come and dwell with you. Mm -hmm. You understand? That's why when I got it this morning, man, I ain't gonna lie, I'm gonna be on. I cried, man. I cried, man, because I, 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 I was praying for the knowledge of Solomon. All right. And when that hit me, man, I was like, I couldn't contain it, man. You know what I'm saying? But that, that's what it's talking about when he said in a uh, uh, back in 14, if. If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our dwelling with, the, with men. The tabernacle, that's where we're going to come. That's right. In other words, he's letting you know you're going to be in the kingdom. That's what he said. These are conditions, brothers and sisters. Y'all get it? Mm -hmm. All right, let's go ahead on. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 6 and 14, but we got to make sure we are separated. Yeah, you finish up. Nah, you're you going to finish up. Yeah, finish that up, bro. And God himself shall be within. Who going to be with? 
God. God himself. And be their God. And be their God. Praise the Lord. Let's go with uh, uh let's go to uh Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians Second Corinthians 6. Because all throughout the lesson, brothers and sisters, we're gonna look at some of the ways you gotta carry yourself in order for you to get what it is, the everlasting life, the first scripture that we saw. Then also we're gonna look at uh, uh, some of the conduct of some of the people that were not of Israel and how the Lord rewarded them for doing what it is to say. Because you got some Israelites who ain't Israel. That's right. You got a lot of Israelites gonna be filling up the whorehouses tomorrow. Or the other taverns tomorrow. Or, you know, play where they're gonna get drunk. They're gonna be there tomorrow, having a party, drinking woman. But let's go ahead and read where you at 2 Corinthians 6. I try not to, you know, because we was in that situation before, you know, so I, I really try not to bash them. It's the doctrine that we have to bring out, you know, so we can, our families and friends and also people of this world can wake up and turn, man, because at the end of the day, it really ain't funny, you know, because the Lord is really one, really the one who got this, this veil over the eyes. So right. I just thank the Lord that he removed it off of us. Yeah. Um, 2 Corinthians 6 and 14, what does it say, brother? Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Be ye not unequally yoked with unbelievers. Come on. For what fellowship with righteousness with unrighteousness? What fellowship does your holy day have with their holiday? <laughs> <laughs> huh? Yeah. What, 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 I mean, what, what is it? How are you going to be righteous? You know what I'm saying? But you still going to lie. You're going you gonna to go visit them on their holiday and take part in their food that's sacrificed to idols. Can't do it. Mm -hmm. You can't do it, brothers and sisters. The book say... Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? Go ahead. And what communion hath light with darkness? Come on. And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Y'all know who Belial is? That's Satan. That's Satan. We ain't got no. They've been fighting. Uh, uh, Satan been trying to get at, at, at Christ since the beginning. Mm -hmm. So if we follow after Christ. And then you got Satan trying to get at him. We ain't got no, we ain't partners. We ain't friends. We ain't nothing. There's nothing in common. So ain't no sense of you even trying to straddle that fence. If you either going to serve the Lord or you're going to serve the world. Period. That's it. That's how the Lord works. Everything is conditioned. The Lord got laws set up for this whole world to be run. You ever think about it? Get in the car in a 35 mile per hour zone and go 75 miles an hour and watch what happens. Go 85. Go 120 on the expressway. And more than likely, you're going to jail. Why? Because there is a law established. Right. Go out here and rob a bank, rob a store, shoot somebody, kill somebody. More than likely, you're going to jail. I say more than likely because with us now, people just walking free. Y'all know what I'm talking about. People just walking free nowadays, but hey, that all fall back to the Lord. Because right. he said your young men going to die in the streets. That's right. So we can't blame nobody else. But if you setting up a law, more than likely, outside of Israel, the law going to be for them. Mm -hmm. And if you get out here and go and kill somebody, there's a law set up. So if there's a law set up just to run these cities, this country, all these different precincts where people dwell and live at, you mean to tell me the Lord ain't got no laws and statutes to run this whole world? Mm -hmm. Now what it is, man done came unto his own righteousness and did away with the Lord's righteousness. Because it fits them. They want to have their own rulership, but they don't want nobody ruling over them. That's why I say when he come out, he's going to rule with a rod of iron. Mm -hmm. Right now, man just think they're getting away with it. That's right. Man just going back and forth. You know, they're getting ready to take part in the fertility holiday that's coming up. Mm -hmm. Going to have the kids running around chasing all these eggs. Mm -hmm. And they thinking one time what it's about. But you come and tell them, you got to keep the past so you ignorant. Mm -hmm. You come and tell them, man, we supposed to be keeping the Sabbath, man. Or we, or we got Feast of 11 Bread coming up. You ignorant. Talked to the guy the other day at the place where we supposed to be, uh, you know, doing the, the feast. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, uh, the guy said to me, man, I asked, what is this for? I said, well, this is for the Feast of 11 Bread, man. You know, we come to serve the Lord on this day like he set aside for us to do. He said, praise God. I said, praise the Lord. What God are we praising? <laughs> yeah, we ain't praising the same God. Are you, I was on the phone. I was like, what, what God are we praising, man? Then as I started listening to him, I know y'all heard me a couple weeks ago when I said, dude, listen to the conversation. He was like, well, as we talked long in the conversation, he started saying things like, uh, well, you know, Pastor Smith, she going to be here later on. I'm like, okay, okay, yeah, okay. Then, yeah, you know, the room is big enough because we had a Christmas party here last year. Mm -hmm. I know what God you serve. 
Mm. You, you, you know, vomit. Here it is coming up right now. That gravel yeah, yeah, is coming yeah. up right now. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? That's why you got to pay attention to the, to the conversation, brothers and sisters. But separate yourselves. Be not unequally yoked with unbelievers. Go ahead and read. What yet? Verse 16? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. We're still on 15. Okay, finish that. For what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? That's an unbeliever. Go ahead. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? That's right. Your mind, where the Lord's will, what do you have dealing with idols? What do you have taking part in Easter and Christmas? The Lord's dwelling in you, brothers and sisters. Just by y'all keeping the Sabbath, Sabbath day, the Lord is dwelling in you all. Mm -hmm. So your body is now the temple of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Ain't no other idols got no business even in your mindset. Mm -hmm. You here now, it's too late. And when the Lord say he's a jealous God, he mean it. Ain't no going back. That's right. Ain't no going back. That's the problem. You know, y'all thinking, not y'all, but the world thinking that the Lord love everybody. So once I get tired of it, I can just go ahead and quit. Mm -hmm. Nah, man, you, you can't do that. He the worst gangster in the world. <laughs> <laughs> the worst gangster. All right? Go and finish that, bro. What you at, 16? Yeah. Go ahead. For ye are the temple of the living God. Uh huh. As God hath said. Go ahead. I will dwell in them. Uh huh. And walk in them. Go ahead. And I will be their God. Uh huh. They shall be my people. Go ahead. Wherefore come out from among them. Come out from among them. And be ye separate. And be ye separate. Go ahead. Saith the Lord. Uh huh. And touch not the unclean thing. And what are they gonna do? And I will receive you. That's right, brother. Go ahead. And will be a father unto you. Uh huh. And ye shall be my sons Go ahead. and daughters. Say the Lord Almighty. That's right. So you got to separate yourself, come out from among them, and he said he's going to be a father to you, and you shall be his sons and his daughters. Once again, brothers and sisters, that's a condition. That's a condition. So what we got to do is, let's go over into the, the old book. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 7. <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 7. There you go. Deuteronomy. <coughs> Deuteronomy chapter 7. And let's go look at how it was back in the old days. When the Lord said, he told the children of Israel, you know, before y'all go into the land to possess it, he was going to cast out these nations, these seven nations. Once I get rid of these seven nations, I'm, I'm going to tell you what you ought to do before you go in. And we're going to pick it up at verse 3. And let's see what it is he tells them to do. Because he's going to go in there, Lord, gonna, uh, he giving them land that they got to go and possess. In order for them to go possess the land, he got to knock these seven nations out of there before them. So let's go see what he told. Pick it up at verse 3 and go ahead. Neither, neither shalt thou make marriages with them. So he told him, don't make marriages with them. Go ahead. Thy daughter. Thy daughter. Thou shalt not give unto his son. Uh-huh. Nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. Right. So let's make something clear, brother and sister. We got a lot of Israelite brothers out here, you know, uh, talking against other nationalities. You understand? When the Lord was talking about this, he wasn't talking about the color. Because even if you, if you read the book, Moses was an Israelite married to a Cushite. That's a black woman. You understand? It wasn't the color that was the problem. Let's read the next verse and let's see what the problem was, brother. For they will turn away thy son from following me. That's why he told him not to do it. That's why he said don't marry the other nation. That's right. Because they will turn away thy son from following me. Go ahead. That they may serve other gods. He a jealous God. I don't want you dealing with no other God. Especially if I called you out, if I sanctified you and separated you, I got to show you some things. And you ain't strong enough. Because evidently, y'all mix with these other nations and y'all start serving they God. That's right. So when I give you the land, don't take marriages of they nations. Go ahead and read, brother. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you. Jealous God, go ahead. And destroy these suddenly. Come on. But thus shall ye do deal with them. Drop down to what's the name for me. Drop down to verse 9. Know therefore that uh -huh. the Lord thy God, he is God, uh -huh. the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments uh -huh. to a thousand generations. So this verse said, know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, and he keep covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments. There's a them right there. This inclusive. You understand? Now he told them, don't go marry other nations. But we got to go look in the book and see something. Let's go look at Ruth. Ruth and pick it up. We're going to go to Ruth chapter 1. We're going to go through the whole book. We ain't going to read the whole book. We're just going to pick certain points out of the book so we can see how from the beginning of her mindset all the way to the end, who came out of this woman. Ruth chapter 1, because we see that the Lord say, don't marry them because they're going to cause you to serve other gods. However, he's going to have mercy on them that keep his commandments, right? To a thousand generations. 
So we need to go see that. We need to go see that. Ruth. I just, I just had to uh, look around too. Oh no, I'll do the same thing. I just got my just beat you, that's all. <laughs> hey, hey, right right <laughs> Ruth and pick it up at uh in verse one. Verse one, no, I'm sorry, chapter one, and pick it up at verse eight. Now this after Limelech, his wife Naomi, their two sons went into the land of Moab because there was a famine in Judah. So they went over there, then after uh, Elimelech and the two sons, Marlon and Chile, 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 this is, I can't get, yeah, Chile, uh, after they died off, Marlon, that's what they call it, M-A-H, yeah, Marlon, after they died off, Naomi, she was sad, she felt like, well, you know, I done came down here and lost my, lost my, my husband and, and my sons, but while they was in there, the two sons was in the land of Moab, they took upon themselves wives, the Moabite, two Moabite, um, women of the land. So they married these women, and they died off. Uh, Naomi was finna go back to Judah, because she heard that there was food in the land. So as she get ready to go back, we gonna pick up the conversation and see what took place. So pick it up at verse eight and go ahead. And Naomi said unto her two daughters-in-law. So she now talking to her two daughters-in-law, because she finna go back. She finna go back to her land, because there's food over there. Naomi finna go back to Judah without no food. I mean, without her family that she came down there with. Go ahead, read. Go, return each to her mother's house. Uh huh. The Lord deal kindly with you. Go ahead. As ye have dealt with the deed. The dead. The dead. Uh huh. With me. Go ahead. The Lord grant you that ye may find rest. Uh huh. Each of you. Go ahead. In the house of her husband. Go ahead. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voice and wept. Come on. And they said unto her, Surely we will return with thee unto thy people. So they said, Well, we're going to go with you unto your people. But well, she told me, I'm going to go ahead and go ahead. Just, just go home, mate. You know what I'm saying? Uh, hopefully the Lord bless you in the house with your people. You know what I'm saying? But they told him, we're going we gonna to come with you. So go ahead and read. Where we at? 11. Verse 11. Go ahead. And Naomi said, turn again, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Why are you going to go with me? Go ahead. Are there yet any more sons in my womb? So at this point, she old. She can't have no more, baby. I mean, she probably can, but we're going to see what the question was she said to him. Go ahead. That they may be your husbands? Right. So she said, are you going to... Uh, 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 are there yet any more sons in my womb, womb that they may be your husband? Even if I do have them, are you going to wait till they grow up for you to take them as your wife? So she's still trying to push them off to go ahead and leave. Pick it up at verse 14. Let's see what took place. They lifted up their voice uh -huh. and wept again. So they lifted up their voice and cried again. Go ahead. And Orpha kissed her mother-in-law. Orpha kissed the mother-in-law. But Ruth clave unto her. But Orpha left. Ruth was serious about what she said. That's right. Go ahead and read, brother. And she said, Behold, uh -huh. Behold your sister-in-law has gone back into her people. Uh-huh. Your sister-in-law has already left. Go ahead. And unto her gods. So she done went back to her gods. Go ahead and read. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. Why don't you go on after your sister-in-law? You know, this is gone, man. I can't deal with it. But what Ruth said, go ahead. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee. So she didn't want to go. Go ahead and read, brother. Or to return from following after thee. Uh-huh. For whether thou goest. For whether you goest. I will go. Come on. And where thou lodgest. Uh-huh. I will lodge. Go ahead. Thy people shall be my people. Uh-huh. And thy God, my God. So I'm going to keep the commandments of the living God. Mm -hmm. Whatever God we were serving, I ain't doing. I'm coming to you and I'm going to follow your God. You understand? That's why the book said mercy to them that keep his commandments. Well, we're going to see the mercy that the Lord had on them. Let's go and read. That's it on 14. Correct. Drop it. Keep going. Uh, keep going through 16. Or did we finish that? We just finished 16. Alright, so let's go to uh, chapter 2 and pick it up at verse 1. And then drop down to verse 8. And Naomi had a kinsman of her husband's. Uh-huh. A mighty man of wealth. Right, so the, 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 the rule in Israel, if a woman, if, if the sons died off, the next in line, the kinsman, you know, take the woman and then raise up inheritance through that woman. Alright, so now the, what the, Naomi's explaining to her, the next person in line. Naomi had the kinsman of her husband's mighty man, uh, 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 a kinsman of her husband's, a mighty man of wealth. Go ahead. Of the family of Emelak. Go ahead. And his name was Boaz. And his name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabite. Drop down to verse 8 and go ahead. So. Then said Boaz unto Ruth. Uh huh. So this after Boaz come back, he asked his men, Who is this woman out here? And he's like, This is uh, Ruth the Moabite's woman. That's who she is because she was out there in the field gleaning. 
I mean, what she was doing was she was she went over, she went up. They almost sent her up to go into the field and get all the corn up and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? To go work. So what she did, she was gleaning. She was going from all the different fields to get food, whatever was left over from the reapers. She was picking them up and putting them in a hat, which is a sack. So what took place, brother, when Boaz got back? Because he asked about her. And they told her who she was. She came back with Naomi. And she said she's going to follow after us. Go ahead and read. Where you at? Verse 8. said Boaz and Jeruth. Uh -huh. So now Bo Boaz is talking to Ruth. Go ahead. Hearest thou not my daughter? Uh-huh. Go not to glean in another field. So he told her, don't go into another field. Don't go, don't go nowhere else. Go ahead, read. Neither go from hence. I uh, abide. Stay here. Go ahead. But abide here fast by my maid. So now you stay here with, with my maid. Don't go into the other fields no more. Go ahead, read, brother. Let thine eyes be on the field that thy do reap. Uh huh. Let your eyes be on the field that thy do reap. Go ahead. And go thou after them. Uh huh. Have I not charged the young men that they shall not touch thee? Go ahead. And when thou art, art at thirst, go into the vessels mm -hmm. and drink of that which the young men have drawn. Now let's see the question she asked him. Go ahead. Go ahead, read. Then she fell on her face uh -huh. and bowed herself to the ground Go ahead. and said unto him, Why have I found grace in thine eyes, that thou shouldest take knowledge of me, mm -hmm. seeing I am a stranger? Wait a minute, she a stranger. So how is it that you know, a, lot of brothers, a lot of brothers in the street be like, I'm not Ruth, was an Israelite. She just said, I'm a stranger. <laughs> she came out letting them all have. They, I mean, they, they just, I, I don't know, but they, this, is, this is the mindset of them trying to, like that Pharisee mindset, they don't want nobody else but Israel getting it. But that ain't how the Lord worked, man. That is not how the Lord worked. And we're going to see that as we go a little further. Go ahead, Ray. What, what she say? And Boaz. Seeing I am a stranger. Verse 11, come on. And Boaz answered and said unto her. Uh-huh. It has fully been showed me. It has been showed me. Go ahead. All that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law. Uh-huh. Since the death of thine husband. Go ahead. And how thou hast left thy father and thy mother. Left your father and thy mother. Go ahead. In the land of thy nativity. Uh-huh. And art come unto a people which thou knowest not. You come to a people thou knowest not. Read verse 12 and go ahead. The Lord recompense thy work. The Lord recompense thy work. Go ahead. And a full reward he given thee uh -huh. the Lord God of Israel. Go ahead. Under whose wings thou art come to trust. So now you done come to trust the God of Israel. Mm -hmm. So let's see what it is he going to do to her. How he going to bless her. So what we at, brother? We going to verse chapter 3 and verse 6 now, right? Right. Did we win 13? Finish 13 now. Finish 13 now. I'm sorry. I was looking at that too. 13, what it say? Then she said, uh -huh. Let me find favor in thy sight. Go ahead. My Lord. Uh -huh. For that thou hast comforted me. Mm -hmm. And for that thou hast spoken freely unto thine handmaid. Go ahead. Thou, though I be not like unto one of thine own handmaids. Right, so you speaking friendly to me, like I'm one of your handmaids, even though I'm not one of your handmaids. But she done made the decision to come up under the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So what we got to do, brothers, let's go look at chapter 3 and verse 6. Chapter 3 and verse 6, you know, no, Naomi is telling her what she need to do because they're going to have a little get together in the evening. And Boaz, you know, after he eat, you know, get a little, do a little drinking, he's going to feel joy in his heart. And, and Naomi told her to go by his bed and mark the place where he lay. So when he come in, you know what I'm saying, and you go holler at him. You go talk to him. Let's see what, what happened here. Pick it up at verse 6, brother. Go ahead. And she went down unto the floor. Uh huh. And did according to all that her mother in law bade her. Right, so she did exactly what Naomi told her to do. Because she trying to get seed raised up through her. She wants this inheritance to keep going on. Plus, she loved Naomi. Plus, she loved the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, remember, Boaz is a big guy now. We're going to see how big Boaz is. Go ahead and read, brother. And when Boaz had eaten and drunk, uh -huh. and his heart was merry. His heart was merry. He was, he was feeling tipsy. Go ahead. He went to lie down at the end of the heap of corn. Uh huh. And she came softly. Go ahead. And uncovered his feet and laid her down. Go ahead. And it came to pass at midnight that the man was afraid. Uh huh. And turned himself. So he was a little startled, like the book say. <clears throat> afraid and turned himself. Go ahead. And behold, a woman lay at his feet. Uh huh. So that was Ruth at his feet. She did what her mother in law told her to do. Go ahead. And he said, Who art thou? Uh huh. And she answered, I am Ruth, thine handmaid. Go ahead. Spread therefore thy skirt over thine handmaid. Uh-huh, so she asking him to take her. So her desire can be fulfilled in order for her to keep his heritage going. Go ahead, brother. For thou art a near kinsman. Uh-huh, for you are the next in line. Go ahead, read. And he said, Blessed be thou the Lord, uh -huh. my daughter. Go ahead. For thou hast showed more kindness in the latter end then at the beginning, go ahead. And as much as the follow, as thou followest not young men, uh -huh. whether poor or rich, go ahead. And now, my daughter, fear not. I will do to thee 
all that thou requirest. Mm -hmm. For all the city of my people doth now doth know that thou art a virtuous woman. See, he's a what? A virtuous, virtuous woman. woman. Y'all know what a virtuous woman is? Mm -hmm. That's a crown to her husband. Good a good woman. Somebody that fear the Lord. Right. Somebody that a man, when he walk in the room, man, he got on the arm, he proud. She a virtuous woman. Mm -hmm. A lot of folly ain't coming out of mouth. Mm -hmm. A lot of fighting and caring ain't going on in mouth. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. And that's what Boaz, a, a guy, a man from another nation, told him. We know you're a virtuous woman. This is the one from another nation. We just saw him do the rhyme with what it said. Don't take, don't marry other nations. Because they're going to serve, uh, cause you to serve under God. Mm -hmm. But he just said, you know, I know you're a virtuous woman, man. So as we can read a little further on, we're going to see that Boaz said, I'm going to do it, but I got to make sure I present this before the other kinsmen, the next one in line. I am one of the kinsmen, but I'm not next. There's somebody that coming for me. But Naomi told her, Ruth, Boaz is going to be turning until he get this thing done. Boaz like it. I don't know if he just wanted to do it in Harris, but she might have been pretty. I don't know. But I know one thing, Boaz, she told him he ain't going to rest until he get it done. So go ahead and read. Where we at? Let's go to chapter 4. And we see that Boaz getting ready to go meet up with the next kinsman. And he, he talked to him and told him, hey, when Naomi sell, Naomi sell in Limelech's land, everything that come with it, even you got to take root. And he told him, hey, I can't do it, man, because it's going to mark my inheritance that I already have set. So he's telling this to the next kinsman in line. Boaz is talking to him, and the guy's responding to him, telling him, I can't do it. Because it's going to mar my own inheritance. So you know Boaz like, that's what's up. Take your shoe off and pass it. Because that's what they had to do in order to show that an agreement has taken place. They would take the shoe off in front of the witnesses and give it to the neighbor. That's how you know the agreement is now set. Mm -hmm. So pick it up at verse 13 and come on. So Boaz took Ruth. So Boaz took Ruth. And she was his wife. And she was his wife. Go ahead. And when he went into her, uh -huh. the Lord gave her conception. Uh -huh. And she bare a son. Uh -huh. And the woman said unto Naomi. And the women said unto Naomi. Go ahead. Blessed be the Lord. Blessed be the Lord. Which have not left thee this day without a kinsman. So you got a kinsman. Go ahead. That his name may be famous in Israel. Uh huh. And he shall be unto thee a restorer of thy life. Go ahead. Now this is Naomi. Now Naomi was sad now because she had lost her husband and her two sons. Go ahead and read. And a nourisher of thine old age. Uh-huh. So he told us he's gonna be a he gonna be a nourisher of your old age. What else? For thy daughter-in-law. For your daughter-in-law. Which loveth thee. Which love you is what? Which is better to thee than seven sons. She's better to you than seven sons. This that virtuous woman. Didn't even come out of the womb of Naomi. But these handmaids are telling she's better to you than seven sons. Mm. Go ahead and read, brother. Hath born him. Hath born him. Go ahead. And Naomi took the child. Uh huh. And laid it in her bosom. Go ahead. And, because, and became nurse unto it. Uh huh. And the women, her neighbors, gave it a name, saying, "There is a son born to Naomi." Uh huh. And they called his name Obed. They called him what? Obed. Go ahead and read. He is the father of Jesse. The father of who? The father of David. Keep reading. The, the father of what? Of David. David was who? The king of Israel. The king of Israel. When he get back, gonna be the king of Israel. Right. This was David's grandfather came out of the womb of another nation. Y'all right. understand that? Mm -hmm. Mercy to them that keep his commandments. Mm -hmm. So I took y'all there because I wanted y'all to see even though what he said in Deuteronomy he wasn't looking at the skin color. You know what I'm saying? He always checking the mindset. That's, right. That's what he checked. Because like I say, there's some Israelites in the flesh that the Lord ain't paying attention to at all. Right. That's right. At all. Now, uh, Ruth was a virtuous woman, so virtuous that Obed, the grandfather of David, our forefather, came out of this woman. Boaz slept with her. And guess what? As you go down the line, guess who else came out of that? Jesus came out of that. Praise the Lord. Y'all understand? That's right. All right, brothers and sisters, let's go ahead on. Let's go to Psalm 146 and verse 1. Psalm 146 and verse 1. <clears throat> Go ahead, read, brother. Praise you, the Lord. Uh huh. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. While I live, will I praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. I will sing praises unto my God while I have, the, have any being. 
Put not your trust in princes. Put not your trust in princes. Go ahead. Or the son of man. Uh huh. In whom there is no help. Go ahead. His breath goeth forth. Mm -hmm. Return it to his earth. Mm -hmm. And that very day his thoughts perish. That's right. So don't put your trust in man. You gotta put your trust in this word of God. Alright? Go ahead, read. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob uh -huh. for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. And that's what Ruth had. Mm -hmm. She had the God of Jacob. Mm -hmm. What'd she say? I, I no, my people gonna be your people, your God gonna be my God. And the Lord took that. He he, he really appreciated that in a way that he allowed a great king to come out of this mess, right? I don't understand. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, read, bro. Which you made heaven and earth, uh -huh. and sea, and all that therein is. Go ahead. Which keepeth the truth forever. Uh huh. Which executeth judgment for the oppressed. Go ahead. Which giveth food to the hungry. Which giveth food to the hungry. The Lord looseth the prisoners. The Lord looseth the prisoners. Come on. The Lord openeth the eyes of the blind. He opened the eyes of the blind. The Lord raiseth them that are bowed down. He raised them that are bowed down. The Lord loveth the righteous. He loveth Israel. The righteous. The book said the Lord loveth the righteous. Mm -hmm. This yeah. why Ruth got. Because he loved the righteous. That's another condition, brothers and sisters. Right. Once you fall up under these conditions, then every, everything else don't matter. Because you're trying to get the reward at the first resurrection. Now, if you in the flesh when you get back, then you got to go into your own land and all that type of stuff. But if you keep the law of standing commandment, you make it the first time, you don't even see none of that. You become just like Israel. At that time, you become a doctor. <clears throat> and that's what we all fighting for. To make the kingdom. Where we at, brothers and sisters? Let's go to... Uh, Just finish it. Okay, now let's go over to 1 John 3. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. First John chapter 3. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. Can you get it? Go ahead and read. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, mm -hmm. that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, mm -hmm. because it knew him not. That's right. So they don't know us. Beloved. Go ahead. Now are we the sons of God? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be? Right. It, it don't appear right now what we shall be. Go ahead. But we know that when he shall appear. But when he shall appear, we're going to do what? We shall be like we him. We shall be like him. So that's what we're trying to do now. This is why we're keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. Because when he shall appear, we going to be like That's when we going to get changed in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Right. That's what we're working toward, right? Right. Go ahead and read. For we shall see him as he is. Come on. And every man that hath this hope in him purifies himself. Everybody that had this hope says it's okay for two men to lay it up with each other. No, no. Everybody that had this hope take part in Mardi Gras. Oh, no. Everybody that had this hope take part in Easter that's coming. Oh, no. The book says everybody had his hope purify himself, mm -hmm. sanctify, mm -hmm. set yourself apart from what's going on. Right. This is how you can expect what's coming. Holy. That's right, bro. Go and keep reading, bro. Even as he is pure. Uh huh. Whosoever committed sin, whosoever committed sin, transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Skip down to verse eight. He that committed sin. He that committed sin is of the devil. Is of the devil. Go ahead. For the devil sinned from the beginning. Uh huh. For this purpose. For this purpose, God, the Son of God was manifested. So he didn't come and just just because you came up on the earth, he just loved you and just think. Uh, like I say, at the beginning, he came. It was already a plan for mankind to come back, because once Satan did what he did, it was already over. Satan broke the law, standing commandments in the kingdom. That's why he got cast out. Whatever they was in the kingdom, he on his earth now. And he broke it. Then he got here. Then he murdered Adam and Eve. Caused them to die. So from the foundation of the world, guess what? Christ had already had to come and die for mankind to bring us back. That's right. It was not talking about your worldly mindset. He loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's the case. What are we doing this for? Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, we might as well just go ahead and break the Sabbath. Go buy. Go sell. Go eat some pig. Let's mm -hmm. get it in. If he loved the world. That ain't what he talking about. He was talking about his creation. That's what he loved. And he giving everybody an opportunity to get back. You know, one of the elders said something real profound that I, I, I never thought about. Because you know, when you're in, the, you're in the Sunday church, you always had that mindset that, you know, I done sinned, I done backslide, and I'm coming back. I mean, you, you backslide a lot. It, it, I mean, leave it up to Sunday church. You do a lot of backsliding. Right? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But when this elder said what he said, so he got one shot. 
And the one shot you got is the life that you're living right now. Right. You don't get a second chance. This is it. Right. So the time that you're breathing, all the way to the time that you leave this earth, that's your time right there. That's your time right there. So you got to take every moment, every second, every hour of the day, of trying to make sure you get this thing right. The thing is almost over, guys. That's right. So if anything, you should be tightening down a little bit more. Instead of getting worse, you're supposed to be trying to get all the kinks out. Get all the wrinkles out. Because soon we're going to see the coming of the Lord. So why is it that we play around with it? Why is it that we joking like it ain't going to happen? If you know somebody finna come in your house and kill everybody in your house, you're going to sit there and prepare. Mm -hmm. Or you're going to get somewhere where you ain't going to put your family in jeopardy. That's right. Right? Mm -hmm. So the Lord coming back with a vesture dipped in blood. That means he coming back to kill. Mm -hmm. So if y'all know he getting ready to come back and kill, that means you got to get in line now. Right. Where we at, brother? We the that was verse, in the verse 8. The, the Son of God was manifested uh -huh. that he might destroy the works of the devil. That's why he had to come, that he might destroy the works of the devil. And that's to kill, steal, and destroy and get you in a lake with him. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. The laws are not grievous. The Lord don't love you sinning either. Bring it back over to chapter 2. Stay in the book of John. Chapter 2 and pick it up at verse 14. <clears throat> I have written unto you, fathers, uh -huh. because ye have known him that is from the beginning. Go ahead. I have written unto you, young men, uh -huh. because ye are strong. Go ahead. And the word of God abideth in you, mm -hmm. and ye have overcome the wicked one. Right, the word of God abideth in you, you have overcome the wicked one. Go ahead. Love not the world. For God so love the world. Love not the world. For God so love the world, brother Tobias, you got to be tripping. This ain't what it say. Love not the world. Y'all see the same thing we read? <clears throat> the book say love not the world. That goes to prove what I'm trying to tell you. He's not talking about he loved all the sin and everything. He approved and signed off on everything that's going on. He's telling them by the mouth of John, love not the world. Go ahead. Neither the things that are in the world. Neither the things that are in the world. Come on. If any man love the world, uh -huh. the love of the Father is not in him. So for God to love the world, he, that he gave his only begotten son. So at this point, they talking about the Father now. That's right. They said for God to love the world, that he gave his only begotten son. But the book just said, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Not in. Go ahead and read all that is in the world, uh -huh. the lust of the flesh. The lust of the flesh, come on. The lust of the eyes. And the lust of the eyes. And the pride of life. And the pride mm -hmm. of life. That'll get you cut off. That's a condition. Mm -hmm. That is a, 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 a real sneaky condition <clears throat> that a lot of people don't pay attention to. When you get rid of pride, then you become humble. That's right. That humility is what you're trying to get. I, I know, I know, I know y'all know the book, what the book says. The meek shall inherit her. Right. Another form of humility, brother and sister. Go ahead and read. What you got? It's, what not you got? Of, it's not of the Father. It's not of the Father. But it's of the world. Go ahead. And the world passeth away. And the world passeth away. And the lust thereof. Uh-huh. But he that doeth the will of God. He that doeth the will of God. Abideth forever. Abideth forever, <clears throat> brother and sister. So now, let's go over to Proverbs 6 and 16. And I want to look at something right quick because I want to make sure y'all understand that this condition that the Lord has set in place about this pride. Proverbs 6 and 16. Because <clears throat> that's a minor thing. That's, that's a, that pride is a, uh, is a subtle weapon. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know when the book say uh, Satan deceived and he real subtle. Mm -hmm. That pride is subtle. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That pride is real subtle. And I used to deal with it. I still deal with pride. You know what I'm saying? We're all dealing with issues, but we're trying to make sure we get these things set up because the Lord is starting to come. The more and more I see that the Lord is allowing us to get this church set up, the more and more he calls me to get in his word, and the more and more he calls me to straighten up and fly right. Mm -hmm. Because you got to stay in the book. And the more and more you stay in the book, the more and more you start looking at the man in the mirror. That's right. You understand? And once you start looking at the man in the mirror, you start putting down the things that you ain't got no business doing because you ain't guaranteed to make it. That's why he said, shall be saved. <laughs> shall be saved. That is future tense. If you're already saved, walk in front of me. Let me just punch you in your face. 
If your nose bleed, you ain't saved. Right. My hand go through your head, you already got it. That's right? That's right. Because right. when you get saved, you get everlasting life. Everlasting. Proverbs 6 and 16, brother. What it say? These six things doth the Lord hate. These six things does, does the Lord hate. What's the first one? Yea, seven are an abomination unto go. him. That's right. Come on. A proud look. First one he said, a proud look. Mm -hmm. So we got to get rid of the proud looks, people. Everybody that's dealing with pride, especially in Israel, whether you be flesh or spiritual, right. you got to get rid of pride. You can't just take this gospel and think that this word of God that you just already there. You got to humble yourself. I'm one of them. I ain't been in the street just cutting people with the word. I don't care. I mean, we just brother know, my son know, my daughter know, they know we get out in the streets, man, and people come up with that nonsense, I cut them quick. Won't give you a chance to even open your mouth. Brother, hit this script, hit that script, hit that, we just chop them, chop them, lay them down, <laughs> stacking them up. But it ain't about that, it's about humility. Sometimes when you practice humility and get rid of pride, you listen to people put their foot in their mouth. Mm -hmm. When you listen to them put their foot in their mouth, then you know how to deal with them righteously. Why you think Christ was so smooth when he came? Why you think he was the way he was? I mean, not saying that he was no punk now, but he just was so smooth, he, he realized he had to deal with people, and that's the same way the Lord called Israel to deal with people. That's right. You got to deal with people righteously and humble. And it starts first in your house. From your house, then out into the world. You understand? The biggest challenge is in everybody's house because everybody in the house can see you for you. Mm -hmm. So you get that in line, then everything else is smooth. Y'all understand? Mm -hmm. All right, let's go on. A lying tongue. A lying tongue. And hands that shed innocent blood. All right, so drop that, bro. I just wanted y'all to see that. That he said that the seven things that the Lord hate, the first one that came out of his mouth is a proud look. All right? So let's go over to Acts. Acts 10. Acts chapter 10. Now we're going to pick it up with the old Canadians. Another nation. Mm -hmm. Another nation. Mercy on them that keep his commandments. Mm -hmm. Mercy on them that keep the commandments. Acts chapter 10 and verse 1. Go ahead. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius. Mm -hmm. A centurion of the band called the Italian band. Go ahead. A devout man. A devout <clears throat> man. And one that feared God with all his house. One that did what? Feared God with all his house. That's the key right there. The fear of the Lord is what? The beginning of wisdom. He feared God with his all with all his house. Come on. Which gave much alms to the people. Uh-huh. And prayed to God always. And prayed to God always. Come on. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day. Uh-huh. An angel of God coming in to him. Go ahead. And saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid. Right, so now the angel appeared before him, called Canadians. When he saw him, he was afraid. What did he do? And said, what is it, Lord? Uh, go ahead. And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God. Uh-huh. And now send men to Joppa. Send men to Joppa. Go ahead. And call, call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. Go ahead. He lodges with one Simon, a tanner. Right, so go get Simon. Simon going to be with another Simon, who's a tanner. Go ahead. Whose house is by the seaside. Uh -huh. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. So he got to go get Peter, which is an Israelite. <clears throat> Peter going to tell him what to do. Okay, so he going to gather the two men that, that's inside his house. He also going to gather one of the so two of the soldiers and one of the two of the servants and one of the soldiers. They going to start heading over to Joppa. Pick it up verse 9 and what happened? On the borrow, as they went in, went on their journey, uh -huh. drew near into the city. Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. Go ahead. And he became very hungry uh -huh. and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance uh -huh. and saw heaven open. So he saw heaven open. Go ahead. And a certain vessel descending unto him, uh -huh. as it had been a great sheep knit at the four corners. Go ahead. And let down to the earth, mm -hmm. wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, Go ahead. and fowls of the air. Uh -huh. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill. And eat. All right, so he saw a sheep knitted at the four corners inside, because it said, if you notice, it says, wherein, meaning inside the sheep. Mm -hmm. Where well, all men are four footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the earth. Go ahead. The, the, the 13 it says, voice came to him, 
Rise, Peter, kill, and eat. What Peter said? But Peter said, Not so, uh -huh. Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. That's right. Go ahead. And the voice spake unto him again the second time. Uh -huh. What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. That's right. So we see this took place three times. All right now, when Peter, he died of the vision, <coughs> as he was dying of the vision and thinking on that, the Spirit came and told him, somebody come to look for you. Go with him when they get there. Pick it up at verse 20 and go ahead. 22 and go ahead. 22. Uh-huh. And they said, Cornelius, a uh -huh. centurion, a just man. Go ahead. So he asked them, you know, basically, what would you come here for? Now, he going to go with them, but he asked them, what would you come here for? Now they explain it why they there. So what did he say, brother? Cornelius, a just man. Cornelius, a just man. Go ahead. And one that feareth God. One that feareth God. Come on. And a good report among all the nations of the Jews. Go ahead. Was warned from God by an holy angel to send for thee unto thy house. Right, so an angel was sent to him, told him, go send for thee into your house and to hear what? And to hear words of thee. Right, because Peter is an Israelite, so he got to tell him what to do. Go ahead and read. Then called he them in uh -huh. and lodged them. And on the morrow Peter went away with them. Uh -huh. And certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. Go ahead. And the morrow after they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them, mm -hmm. and had called together his kinsmen and near friends. Right, so he called all the friends. And you know, he's a terrorist, so you know, he probably got some pool. But he called them all in. All his friends and them came on in there. We got a house for the Gentiles. Go ahead, read. And as Peter was coming and Cornelius went him, uh -huh. met him, Go ahead. And fell down at his feet and worshipped him. And what Peter said? But Peter took him up, saying, uh -huh. stand up, I myself also am a man. So did he say, you need to come out here and kiss my boot? Nope. Did he say, kiss my boot? Nope. So why is it like got people on the street kissing their boots? He said, rise up. I myself also am a man. That's right. That's how we supposed to. We ain't supposed to make no other nations kiss our boots. No, no, no. What satisfaction is that? <laughs> Get down to the ground. Kiss my boot. Yeah, kiss my boot. Kiss his boot too. And wipe it off. I ain't gonna lie, man. Sometimes I, be, I, I used to be like, yeah, that's what's up. But as, as knowledge came, <laughs> I, started, I started realizing, man, what are we doing, man? Foolishness. Straight foolishness, man. Don't get no satisfaction out of somebody kissing your boot. Tell them, get up, man. Let me tell you what you gotta do to get salvation. That's right. That's what you're supposed to do. That's what Peter was saying. And rise up. I myself also am a man. I ain't nobody. Go ahead and read, brother. And as he talked with them, uh -huh. he went in and found many that will come together. So a lot of them that came now, and they sitting there waiting on the word of God. That's right. Because they know it's real God. Go ahead. And he said unto them, uh -huh. you know how that it is unlawful. It's unlawful for what? Unlawful thing, go ahead. For a man that is a Jew to keep company uh -huh. or come into one of another nation. Right, so it's unlawful uh, 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 for a Jew to keep company, company or come unto one of another nation. So at that time, before he saw the vision, this is what was before, set before Israel. That's why I say, man, you know it's unlawful for this to take place. We can't do that. But go ahead and read. But God has showed me that I should not call any man coming or unclean. That's right. So now everybody got an opportunity. <clears throat> go ahead and read. Where we at? That's in the 28? It's in the 28. So where we go to? We go to Acts. Cornelius, what, what happened? Cornelius goes into what took place, you know, a couple days, four days ago. I saw, I was in the, in the dream. The, uh, the angel came to me, somebody with bright clothes and showed up before me. And told me my arms are being before uh, uh, my prayers are going up before the Lord. Go send for Peter. So now Peter is getting ready to respond. Pick it up at verse thirty-four and go ahead. Then Peter opened his mouth. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, "Uh huh." Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Of a truth, I perceive. Wait a minute. Now I see something. God ain't no respecter of person. So I get it now. Of a truth, man, I understand. Okay, God ain't no respecter of person. That's what I saw when the, the, four, uh, the sheep was near at the four corners and all manner of beasts was inside. Meaning everybody included now. Yeah. Don't mean you can eat pork. That's right. Because <laughs> they sure take that, don't they? <laughs> I got to do a prayer. Okay. All right. All right. Isaiah 6 and 6 and 20. Oh, 17. <laughs> you don't destroy those eating. That's why I'm letting you get back. So where we at? <clears throat> That's 30, read 35 for me. But in every nation. But in every nation. He that feareth him. He that feareth him. And worketh with righteousness. Uh -huh. Is accepted with him. So every nation. He that feareth him and worketh righteousness. Is accepted with him. So now let's go down. To, skip down to verse 44. And go ahead. While Peter yet spake these words. Go ahead. The Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. Uh huh. And they of the circumcision. Which believed were astonished. So who is they of the circumcision? The Israelites. The Israelites. So they were astonished when the Holy Ghost 
fell on all of them which heard. So this, inside Cornelius' house, you got Cornelius and you got all these Gentiles in there. And then the people that came with Peter, they saw the Holy Ghost come on them, so they were astonished. Go ahead, read. As many as came with Peter, uh -huh. because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's right. The gift of the Holy Ghost that took place on them in Acts chapter 2. The day of Pentecost. That's right. When they start speaking in tongues. Not them. Go ahead, read. Well, they hear them speak with tongues uh -huh. and magnify God. Go ahead. And then answer Peter. Now we got to see what the next step is. Because, okay, now they got to understand. The Holy Spirit done came on them. But now they got to go through the same process. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read what it says. <clears throat> Can any man forbid water? Can any man forbid water? Go ahead. That these should not be baptized. Uh -huh. Which have received the Holy Ghost. So they got to be baptized. They didn't got the Holy Ghost. They got to be baptized. Hmm. Go ahead and read. If he was talking about just the word, then... They could have just got, I mean, why would he say, can any man forbid water? Now, we understand also the water can, can clean, as far as the word can clean you also, but at this point, he's talking about the water. We got to go baptize them now. Mm -hmm. They got to be cleansed. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, read. As well as we. Uh-huh. And he commanded them to be baptized. He commanded them to be baptized. In the name of the Lord. Come on. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. So what did he say? Man, can you stay here for a little bit? Hang out with us, man. That word is good, man. Golly, man. This is, hey, we like this. <laughs> so now, let's look at it again. Let's go to uh, Ephesians 5 and 1. Just trying to deal with this, brothers and sisters, the condition, conditional love that the Lord has set before us, brothers and sisters. That's all. We see in, we see in conditions from Ruth, what she did. We see in conditions from uh, uh, Cornelius, what he did. He feared the Lord. And they start, when they fear the Lord, they come on to what the Lord say do. So by them coming under what the Lord say do, now they get to come in. It ain't just a free ticket just to do what you want to do. If you love the Lord, you keep the commandments. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 5. In verse 1. Ephesians 5 and verse 1. Go ahead and read, bro. Be, be ye therefore followers of God. Be ye followers of God as dear children. As dear children, come on. And walk in love. And walk in love. As Christ also hath loved us. Uh-huh. And hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. Go ahead. For a sweet smelling state. Uh-huh. But fornication. So he gave, he gave, <clears throat> have given Christ uh as not somebody that pen baker. A sweet smelling safe. You got a pen? Okay. Go ahead and read. You good. Right, go ahead and read that, bro. But fornication uh -huh. and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you. So fornication, all uncleanness, clean, uh, uncleanness, uncleanness, let it not be once named among you, covetous, covetousness, okay? As what? As becoming saints. As becoming saints. Go ahead. Neither filthiness. Neither filthiness. Nor foolish talking. Nor foolish talking. Nor jesting. I know what jesting is, that's playing around. Which are not covenant. Which are not convenient. I mean, not convenient. Go ahead. But rather giving up thanks. Uh huh. For this ye know. For this ye know. That no whoremonger. No whoremonger. No unclean person. No unclean person. No covetous man. Come on. Who is an idolater. Idolater. Hath any inheritance. Uh huh. In the kingdom of Christ and of God. Go on, keep reading. Let no man deceive let you. Let no man deceive you now. He love everybody. Mm -hmm. Don't let them fool you. <laughs> he just sat right here and gave you conditions. He just told you what? That no whoremonger, no unclean person, no covetous per, uh, man who is an idolater had any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ. The kingdom of Christ. He also said what? Fornication, all uncleanness, let it not be once named among you. Correct. If you got this, if you taking part in this, you ain't getting the kingdom of Christ. Uh, Christ. That's a condition. Go on and finish reading. Let no man deceive you with vain words. Let no man deceive you with empty words. Go ahead. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. That's right. Verse 7. What does it say? Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Be not ye therefore uh, partakers with them. Not just in physical activity, but also belief. Not all, and when I say physical, I'm saying not, not just going out to the Christmas party, but also sitting up here agreeing with them. And thinking it's okay. Well, you know, as long as it ain't bothering me, I ain't got nothing to say about it. That ain't what the Lord said. You partaking it. You just don't know that you're straddling the fence. Really, you on that side. 
You can't partake in this period. Let's go to 2 John 1. Let's see. How he gonna make it a little clear for you not to partake in this. As long as it don't come this way, I don't know swing my way, I'm cool. Swing, I'm a, a trisex, I try anything. <laughs> and you sit here and just agree with it. Hey man, y'all do what you do. Just don't come out. No, bro. That ain't the way it's supposed to be. Your mindset's supposed to be against it. Mm -hmm. If you follow what the book say, I'm telling you, you're going to regurgitate what you read. Mm -hmm. That's right. As soon as somebody say to you, well, how you feel, man, you going straight to Lake of Fire. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's an abomination. Mm -hmm. It ain't no justifying. It ain't no trying to sit up here and talk all smooth well. Well, as long as you guys are happy, don't come my way with that, because I'm going to tell you, you want to fight me, that problem call police on me. <laughs> some, some, I mean, because when you, when you sit here and this is what you're feeding yourself, it just comes out. I don't try to tame I try to pick my battles as far as who I'm going to deal with with this gospel now, who I'm going to give it to. You know, if I, if I can already sense in your spirit that you're going to be fighting, we going to, you know what? There was a time I used to like to sit up there. <laughs> now, now, now the wise you get, you just like, you know what? Away. You know, just walk away. <laughs> Go home and get away from it. They ain't even worth it. What does it say, 2 John, verse, uh, verse 8? Correct. Go ahead and read. Look to yourself. Look to yourself. That we lose not those things which we have wrought. Right. So everything you're working for, brother, look, brother and sister, look to yourself that you don't lose it. Everything that y'all putting in this, put, uh, uh, keeping the Sabbath, keeping the holy days that's coming up, y'all working. Y'all working towards something. So look to yourself that you don't lose everything you work for. Come on and read. But that we receive a full reward. You want to get your full reward, brothers and sisters. And it's, it's at a set time. We're going to look at that set time. Go ahead and read. Whosoever transgresseth uh -huh. and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, Go ahead. hath not God. That's right. They ain't speaking according to this book. They ain't got God. So you can't partake in that. That's right. Go ahead and read. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, uh -huh. he hath both the Father and the Son. Go ahead. If there come any unto you, uh -huh. and bring not this doctrine, uh -huh. receive him not into your house. So if anybody come unto you and bring not this doctrine, do not receive him into your house. Go ahead and read. Neither bid him God speak. So you can't even say God bless you. Because mm -hmm. wow. you partaking in it. That's right. So you can't even bid him God speak. Go and read what it say. For he that biddeth him good God speak. So if you bid him God speak, you are what? It's partaker of his evil deeds. You are partaker of his evil deeds. That's why I said it's not just actions, mm. also the mindset. The words. You can't eat. That's right, brother. The words. So you can't take part in this. None of it. That's how strict the Lord is with these conditions. Lord, don't play the radio. I just hope y'all know. Y'all got to make sure you got that fear set in. Because the whole time you here on this earth, you living under grace. Because he's giving you an opportunity to get back to where we originally supposed to be. That's the grace right there. Remember the ones that he told them? He cut them off and said, they ain't going to enter into my rest. Yes. Do y'all understand that these people going to get up at the second resurrection? Yes. Because the first resurrection is what? The Sabbath. Right. They ain't getting into his rest. Right. So if they ain't getting into his rest, that means they got to wake up and stand before the Lord. Yes. They blew it. Right. Mm -hmm. They blew it. Israel. Now, I don't know. They all day. Israelites. That's right. Israelites. So I don't know if they're going to get in the kingdom or not. We just got to hope at that time. I mean, they got to hope at that time that they works outweigh, they good outweigh they bad. Mm -hmm. But the books say they should not enter. I swore my wrath. They should not enter into my rest. So they had all that time. You done already told them you ain't getting it. The first resurrection. Now the second resurrection, brothers and sisters, death still got power. That's why you want to make it the first time. So you can't be partakers of his evil deeds. That's why he tell you. To, that's why we read in, uh, before that in the feast. Be not partakers with them. If you do partake, even if you speak in agreement with them, you are a partaker of their evil deeds. So let's go on to Philippians 2. Let's look at another condition, brothers and sisters. Philippians chapter 2. You all right, bro? You got something to win with? That word, that word, Praise the Lord, man. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Think about them Jehovah's Witnesses when they come to you. That's right, man. That's right. I told them, God bless y'all. Have a good day. Don't thank you. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, the Lord don't play. He's a jealous guy. <laughs> bless you. I ain't blessing you. 
<laughs> I ain't giving them nothing. <laughs> All right, so we got here. Uh, we go into Philippians two, and I want to look at look at another thing here, chapter uh, uh, chapter two and verse fourteen, because I wanted to go here to look at the murmur. When we told to do something, this is also a con condition. Mm -hmm. You can't stand before the Lord murmur. He told you to do something, you got to do it. You can't be complaining about keeping the set, trying to find ways out. I forgot to get toilet paper yesterday. <laughs> and I had this bad. <laughs> I called, I texted Marcus, I said, man, you got a roll? He's like, I got one. So <laughs> I had to hit another brother around the corner. I said, brother Blue, man, you got a roll? I, hey, hey, he wasn't even answering the phone. I got in my truck and went over there. <laughs> By the time he answered the phone, he's like, where you at? I said, I'm out the door, man. I need some toilet <laughs> I was not going to break the Sabbath. Right. You understand what I'm saying? When you fear the Lord, you ain't breaking it. I could have said, well, you know what? I can go get some toilet paper because I ain't got none. <laughs> but you know what I said? I had every opportunity right. yesterday to get it. Right. So you better figure it out. Mm -hmm. yes. That's what I said. Instead of me trying to murmur and find a way out. Mm -hmm. Keep that commandment. That's right, brother. Praise God. Keep the commandment. It ain't embarrassing. Because I know one thing, I couldn't go to my neighbors. I wasn't going there. <laughs> Told you, you ain't got no money. I'm like, you know what? I, I'm not even doing it. I just hit one of the brothers up. <laughs> <You know? laughs> go read that, verse 14, brother. Very good. Do all things without murmurings Do and disputes. Do all things without murmurs and disputes. Go ahead. <laughs> that you may be blameless mm -hmm. and harmless. The sons of God. So you got to be blameless and harmless. Evidently, you're causing an offense or you're doing something wrong if the book says that you may be blameless and harmless. The sons of God, go ahead. Without rebuke. Without rebuke. In the midst of a crook and perverse nation. Uh-huh. Among whom ye shine as lights right, in the world. Right, so you shine as lights in the world, brother, so you can't do things right. with murmurings and disputings because he's giving it to you for you to be an example. That's right. However, we need to go look at an example of people murmuring. And going against the Lord. Let's go over to number 16 and verse 1. Let's go look at the people that want to murmur and go against the Lord. Let's see how the Lord feel about it. Number 16. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. <clears throat> number 16 and verse 1. And go ahead. Now Korah, the son of Ishar, uh -huh. the son of Kohath, Go ahead. the son of Levi, mm -hmm. and Dathan, Go ahead. and Abiram, uh -huh. the son of Eliab, and On, uh -huh. the son of Peluth, sons of Reuben, took men. They took men. Go ahead. And they rose up before Moses. And they rose up before Moses. With certain of the children of Israel. Uh huh. Two hundred and fifty princes of the assembly. Uh huh. Famous in the congregation. Oh, so these guys famous in the congregation. Mm -hmm. So you know they're the plot. You know what, man? We gotta go holler at Moses, man. Straight up, you know, because because he, he just think he all that. He think he the man. He think he the only one anointed. Go ahead, read. Men of renown. Uh huh. And they gathered themselves together against Moses. So they gathered themselves together against Moses and who else? And against Aaron. Come on. And said unto them, Uh huh. You take too much upon you. You take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy. Every one of them. Uh huh. And the Lord is among them. Right. So we holy just like you. The Lord among uh, among the congregation too. You ain't the only ones. You trying to do all this yourself. Go and read. Wherefore then lift up your lift up ye yourselves uh -huh. above the congregation. Above of the, the con you, you do what? You lift up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. So you think that you better than us. That's right. Go ahead and read. And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face. Well, uh oh. When he heard it, he fell upon his face. Go ahead and read. And he spake unto Korah. Uh huh. And unto all his company. Go saying, ahead. Even tomorrow the even Lord will show who are his. Uh huh. And who is holy. And it will cause him to come near unto him. Even him whom he hath chosen will he cause to come near unto him. That's right. So y'all see that Moses hit his face, start praying. But he said, tomorrow, you're going to hook up. You know, bring, get your senses, put fire in it. Come before the Lord. That represents your atonement. You bring it tomorrow. And we're going to see who the Lord chose. Skip down to verse 11 and go ahead. Because he also told him, you know, you, you take it light upon yourself. The Lord called you to do something. You know what I'm saying? The minister before the congregation. And you want to be the priest too? Y'all trying to take this upon yourself? Also, who is Aaron that you murmur against him? Aaron ain't nobody. 
But we're going to get to the root of this. Go ahead and read For which cause both thou and all thy company are gathered together against the Lord. Right. For which cause both thou and all thy company are gathered together against the Lord. Go ahead and read. And what is Aaron? And what is that? Who is Aaron? That ye murmur against him. That ye murmur against Aaron. So they murmur. They ain't murmuring against Aaron. They murmur against the Lord. Y'all got to be careful. Mm -hmm. When you murmur, brothers and sisters, the same God back then, the same God you're dealing with today. Mm -hmm. We're going to look at that. Keep your mouth closed. Mm -hmm. If he calls you out of darkness into the marvelous light, he calls you for a reason. That's right. Do what he say without a problem. Mm -hmm. That's right. Because murmuring would get you cut off. Yeah. Murmuring. We're going to read it. Go ahead and read it. And Moses sent to call Dathan uh -huh. and Abiram. So go get Dathan and Abiram. Go ahead. The sons of Eliab. Uh -huh. Which said, we will, we will not come up. What did Dathan and Eliab say? We will not come up. We ain't coming nowhere. Go ahead and read. Is it a small thing that thou hast brought us up out of a land that flows with milk? Oh, so it ain't a big deal? It ain't a big deal to you that you brought us out of the land that flowed with milk and honey to do what? To kill us in the wilderness. Uh-huh. Except thou make thyself altogether prince over us. So you did this to make yourself prince over us? Go ahead and read, brother. Moreover, thou hast not brought us into a land that floweth with milk and honey. You have not brought us into a land that floweth with milk and honey. Go ahead. Or given us inheritance of fields and vineyards. Uh-huh. But thou put out the eyes of these men. Uh-huh. We will not come up. What they say? We will not come up. They say we ain't coming at this point. Moses is mad now. <laughs> Moses is upset now. He told the Lord, don't hear their prayers or nothing. Don't hear nothing they got to say. I ain't never did nothing to these folks. <laughs> Moses done got hot. But he told him, get your sense. Every man take your and come before the Lord tomorrow. And we're going we gonna to settle this thing. Go ahead and pick it up at verse 28. And then go ahead. And Moses said, Hereby ye shall know that the Lord hath sent me to do all these works. Right, so now the Lord came before the congregation. The Lord told him to separate yourself and follow him. Follow him. <laughs> separate yourself. But once again, Moses and Aaron fell on their faces. Something about falling on your face, man. Go ahead and read. For I have not done them of my own mind. Uh-huh, so whatever death that comes upon these people, I have not done it, done them of my own mind. Go ahead. If these men die the coming death of all men. If they die the common death of all men. Or if they be visited after the visitation of all men. Uh-huh. Then the Lord hath not sent me. If the Lord hath not sent me. Then. Okay, they died a regular way, then the Lord ain't sent me. All right, so y'all look for that. The Lord, and now he, he tell, he giving them what to look for, to understand if it's him doing it, or the Lord doing it. Mm -hmm. If the Lord is the one that gave him this word to bring to y'all, or Moses just bringing it himself. Mm -hmm. If they die to come and death, the Lord ain't sinning. But if the Lord do what? Keep reading. But if the Lord make a new thing. If he make a new thing, and what? And the earth open her mouth. And open up the earth. Go ahead. And swallow them and up. And swallow them up. With all that are pertaining to them, uh -huh. and they go down quick into the pit. Go ahead. Then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. So Ooh. the Lord opened up the earth and swallowed them up. You know these men Ooh. are murmuring against the Lord. That's right. Mm -hmm. Ain't know what it's like? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's see if they, if, if Moses came by the mouth of the Lord, or was he doing it his own way? Go and read. 31. And it, it okay. came to pass. As and he had made an end of speaking, once he all finished speaking, words, all these words, go ahead. That the ground clay was sunk, uh -huh. that was under them. And the earth opened her mouth uh -huh. and swallowed them up. Oh, so we know this is the Lord was talking. Mm -hmm. The Lord the one told Moses to do this. That's right. Go ahead and read. In their houses uh -huh. and all the men that are pertaining unto Korah. Go ahead. And all their goods. All their goods. Go ahead. They and all that appertain to them uh -huh. went down alive into the pit. They went down alive into the pit. Mm -hmm. like, go ahead. And the earth closed upon them. Uh -huh. And they perished from among the congregation. Go ahead. And all Israel that were round about them fled at the cry of them. Uh -huh. And they said, Lest the earth swallow us up also. Go ahead and read. And there came out a fire from the Lord. Uh -huh. Consumed the 250 men that offered incense. Right, so the fire came out from the Lord. The Lord opened up the earth and got the families and everybody else that was on the side of these 250 men. And then at the end, the Lord sent a consuming fire to get those 250 men. Then he tells Eleazar to take the offering, the incense, and put it upon the, offer, uh, uh, the altar so that this would be a memorial to the children of Israel. So they'll know not to murmur. Pick it up at verse 41 and come on. But on the morrow, but the next day, what took place? All the congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses. So they murmured against <laughs> Moses. Man, you had them killed. In against Aaron. 
And against Aaron, come on. Saying, ye have killed the people of the Lord. Go ahead. And it came to pass when the congregation was gathered against Moses and against Aaron that they looked toward the tabernacle of the congregation. And what they saw. And behold, the cloud covered it, and the glory of the Lord appeared. All right, drop down the verse. Uh, uh, I, I want you to read that. Go and read 45. We'll go through 43 and go down. Yeah, you know what? Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. And Moses and Aaron came before the tabernacle of the congregation. Uh huh. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, So what did the Lord say to Moses? Get you up from among this congregation. Get up from among. That's what he's telling y'all today. Separate yourself, because destruction coming. Mm -hmm. The same exact thing. That's right. That's exactly what's taking place today. It's just going to be on a massive scale this time. Mm -hmm. He always tell you, always warn you, separate yourselves. We done saw that. Be not partakers of his evil deeds. That's what's taking place right now. So you got to come out from among them. What Moses them did? That I may consume them as, a, as in a moment. Go ahead and read. And they fell upon their faces. When them dirty boys drop better hit the floor. When Israel opened their mouth, get on your face. That's all I can think about. Y'all remember that song? Yeah. When them dirty boys drop better hit the floor. Yeah. When Israel opened their mouth and start murmuring, get on your face. And that's exactly what Moses them did. Mm. They might have had that song playing. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, read, brother. 46. Go ahead. And Moses said unto Aaron. And Moses said unto Aaron, Take a censer. Uh huh. And put fire therein from off the altar. That censer and that fire represented an atonement. That's right. Go ahead, read, brother. And put on incense. And put on incense. And go quickly into the congregation. Run to the congregation and to do what? Atonement and make an atonement for them. Go ahead. For there is wrath gone out from the Lord. So there is wrath gone out from the Lord. And the what is plague that? is begun. The plague is begun. 47. And come on. And Aaron took them. And Aaron took as Moses commanded. And Aaron did as Moses commanded. Go ahead. And ran into the midst of the congregation. He ran into the midst of the congregation. And behold, the plague was begun. The plague was begun. Among the people. Uh-huh. And he put on incense and made an atonement for the people. Go ahead. And he stood between the dead and the living. Before he even got there, it was already people dead. And the plague was stayed. And the plague was stayed. So once he got there with the, the fire and the, the incense and the fire inside of it, then that's when it stopped. That atonement. That's what Christ for y'all. Mm -hmm. That's what he is for us. If he wouldn't have came as an atonement, then guess what? We still would have been dying. Right. This is an example. That's right. This is the example right here. That's why he came as an atonement. What uh, Aaron had to do, he had to run enough as an, and bring that atonement. Then that's when the death stopped. Go and read 49. What did it say? Now they that died in the plague were 14,700. 14,700. Go ahead. Outside them that died about the matter of Korah. Outside of the 250 men and the people that was on the side of Korah and those, those men that came against Moses and Aaron. Now the next day, tomorrow, another 14,000 the Lord killed. All because of murmuring. These are conditions. Conditions, brothers and sisters. You cannot murmur against the Lord. If you're going to do what he say, you cannot do it with an attitude. you got to be joyful about keeping the law, steps, and commands. If you're not going to be joyful, don't do it. Because you're trying to straddle the fence. Where we at? Drop there. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians 4 right quick. Let's just go verify that. Because they were going against the Lord, but what? Who, who, was, who was it they going to? Going against? Were they going against the Father? Of course they were going against the Father, but who was dealing with them that was coming down before them. That was showing up before them. First Thessalonians chapter 4. What did it say, brother? Pick it up in verse 7. I'm sorry. What did it say? For God hath not called us unto uncleanness. For God has not called us to uncleanness. Go ahead. But unto holiness. But unto holiness. He therefore that despises. Uh-huh. So God is the one that calls you to un uh, uh, called you unto holiness. Not to unclean. He's the one that sanctified you and separated you. So this is why you can't be murmuring. Just like the Lord is the one that called the Israelites back during that time. And they murmured. Moses didn't call them. Moses didn't give them the law, statutes, and commandments. The Lord is the one that gave that, right. gave that to them. So when you murmur, you ain't murmuring against Moses. When you murmuring today and the brothers out here teaching and giving you the God, you ain't murmuring against us. You murmuring against the Lord. You murmuring against the Lord. And just like yep, they murmured then, they murmuring now. That's just right. like he killed then, he's getting ready to kill again. That's right. Teach it. Go and finish reading that, brother. He therefore that despises. He therefore that despises. Despises not. You ain't man. coming against Moses and Aaron. <clears throat> you ain't coming against me and brother Amos, or me and brother Demarcus, or me and Tobias. Despises not man. Go ahead. But God. But God. That's who you coming against. <clears throat> so make sure you murmurings. Make sure you get that get that out of the way. Who, all, who hath also given unto us 
It's Holy Spirit. That's right. He the one gave you all this. He the one gave you this understanding. So make sure you're not murmuring against the Lord. But who is this? John 5 and 39. And this is the something that took place where Christ had healed on the Sabbath day. So the Pharisees trying to catch him up, asking him, you know, not only did he heal on the Sabbath day, but he also say he he a God. He equal with God. And Christ go to tell him, you know, you can go go back and deal with John. He came and testified me. But you know what? The testified man don't matter. What did he tell him to do in 37? I'm sorry, 39. What did he tell him to do to get, to get, a, get a sure testimony? Since you don't believe John, go get a sure testimony. What did he say in 39, brother? And this is the Father's will. Uh, John 5 and 39. That's all right. John 5 and 39. That's it. Search. Are you good? What did he say? Search the scriptures. He says, search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. Go ahead. And they are they which testify So he me. said, search the scriptures. They are they which testify me. Don't worry about what John said. Go into the Old Testament. That's what testifies me. I'm the one who opened up the earth. That's right. And did that. I'm the one who took down a uh, 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 song. I'm the one who's going to bring destruction on this earth again. Because I changed not. That's right. And we're going to look at that too, bro. Let's go to Deuteronomy 32 and 39. Let's go search the scripture. We're going to look at one scripture. Because now, you know, these, these are the one hitters right here. <laughs> you know, in case y'all get a little weary. <laughs> these are quick one hitters right quick. <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 32 and 39. Let me get there, bro. Right, right, right. Deuteronomy 32 and 39. What does it say, bro? See now that I. See now that I. Even I. Even I. Am he. Uh-huh. And there is no God there with me. There is no God with me. Come on. I kill. I love everybody. And I make a lot. I don't hurt nobody. <laughs> I kill. He said, I kill. kill. And do what? And I make a lot. And I make a lot. Come on. I wound. I wound. And I heal. And I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Well, why they don't read this? <clears throat> it's like they start in the the... the the, the other side, on the New Testament, they don't even look at this. But he told them, search the scriptures. Right. And them, they the one, and them you think you have eternal life. They are, they was testify to me. Yeah. They the one, they'll tell you how I really get down. Yeah. You just don't understand. Because you don't know to go back and look. Really? You too busy looking at me in the flesh and not paying attention. But I'm the same one, I'm going to do it again. Same, same thing. What he say? Read it again, brother. <laughs> See, now that, See I, now that I, even I, come on. Am he? Uh huh. And there is no God with me. There is no God with me. This is also speaking of the Godhead. I kill. I kill. I make a lie. I make a lie. I wound. I wound. And I heal. Come on. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. That's right. Also, in another place, you also say, I do 45 and 7. I create peace. I create evil. That's right. I, the Lord, do all these things. Mm -hmm. So, everything that's happening in this earth is taking place, <laughs> in earth is taking place by the Lord. Mm -hmm. Satan can only do what he's given permission to do. But by everybody thinking that the Lord loves everybody, we ain't got no condition. Mm -hmm. So, I said before, we filling up the funeral. Mm -hmm. Filling up the broadcast on the 6 o'clock news. Because mm -hmm. we ain't got no laws. Mm -hmm. ain't, no, ain't no stability. Everybody can do what they want to do. Everybody so joyful. Everybody love everybody. Mm -hmm. Everybody, you know, at a certain time of, time of the year, they get in the Christmas spirit. Mm -hmm. They get in this old wicked Easter spirit. That's when had the kids running around chasing fertility eggs. Mm -hmm. But ain't nobody got no laws to abide by, except for the one that the Lord called to do this, to come out. So y'all blessed that the Lord done called y'all out to keep his laws, steps, and commandments. Hebrews 13 and 8. So we see that he say, I kill and I make a lie, right? That's mm -hmm. right. See if you tell me. See if he was 13 and 8. If he was chapter 13 and verse 8. He's going to hit one verse. One verse, brother and sister. When you get to go ahead and read. Jesus Christ the same yesterday. Jesus Christ the same yesterday. And today. And today. And forever. And forever. So he was the same yesterday, which is in the Old Testament. Today. <coughs> During the time he was on earth, 
and forever, which is also now. But when he get, ain't still gonna be the same. He just said, ain't nothing changing. Nothing. So now let's go into Daniel two and twenty. Let's go see what he did yesterday in the Old Testament. Let's go see what he did. <clears throat> but we got to look at something by the mouth of Daniel right quick. This is during the time when we never, we never had that dream. We never can either had a dream. He had a... Uh, he had an order sent out for all the wise men to be killed because they couldn't interpret the dream. Matter of fact, Nebuchadnezzar, when he had the dream, he forgot the dream. So by him forgetting the dream, he told them, listen, all you wise men, all you, you sources that I have, that I hired, y'all better figure this dream out. <laughs> they couldn't figure it out. They say, tell us something, then we'll interpret it for you. Mm -hmm. They was like, nah, you need to tell them a dream and get on it. So they couldn't figure it out. So what they did, they put out a decree to go get all the wise men. Mm -hmm. They even went to go get Daniel. That's right. mm -hmm. They ain't said, man, why this thing so hasty, man? What's going on? Somebody, hey, tell me what's going on, man. Why, what, what, what is he doing? Say, wait a minute, man. Let me go before the Lord, man, and, 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 and get his understanding on the map. Lord gave the Daniel. Daniel came back. And told, well, then he started praising the Lord, giving, giving the Lord the praise and honor for the interpretation of the dream. And let's see what he said. Daniel 2 and 20, go ahead. Daniel answered and said. Daniel answered and said. Blessed be the name of God forever Blessed be and the ever. name of God forever and ever. Go ahead. For wisdom and might are his. Uh-huh. And he changed the times and the seasons. He changed the time and the season. He removeth kings. He removeth kings. He setteth up kings. He setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise. Uh-huh. And knowledge to them that know understanding. So now, he praising the Lord. He giving God the credit for them getting the dream. But also something he said here. He said he changed the time and the season. He removed the kings and set up kings. So let's go look at one of the kings he set up and removed because of his action. Because he felt he fell outside of the conditions that were set before him. So let's go on to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 15. First Samuel chapter 15, brother, when you get it, go ahead and read, pick up at verse 1. <clears throat> Samuel also said unto Saul, uh -huh. The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, go ahead. over Israel. Mm -hmm. Now therefore hearken thou to the voice of the words of the Lord. That's right. Thus what do you say? Hearken what? Hearken now unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Hearken to the voice of the words of the Lord. That means listen, pay attention, do what he say. Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, uh -huh. I remember that which Amalek did to the Israel. Right, I remember what Amalek did to Israel. Go ahead. How he laid wait for him in the way uh -huh. when he came up from Egypt. That's right. Go ahead. Now go and smite Amalek. So he's telling him to go, <coughs> Samuel talking to Saul, telling him to go and kill Amalek. Go ahead. And utterly destroy all that they have. And spare Take them all not. they have. Don't spare, do what? Spare them not. Spare them not. Go ahead. But slay both man and woman. Man and woman. Go ahead. Infant and suckling. That's babies. Go ahead. Ox and sheep. Ox and sheep. Camel and ass. Come on. And Saul gathered the people together. Uh huh. And numbered them in Tilliam. Go ahead. Two hundred thousand footmen. Uh huh. And ten thousand men of Judah. Go ahead. And Saul came to a city of Amalek. Uh huh. And laid wait in the valley. Go ahead. And Saul said unto the Kenites, Go, depart. Get you down from among the Amalek. Right, so he told them to get on down. Told the Kenites, get down. Uh, go ahead and leave. Get out of here. Get from among these people because we finna take them out. Unless we do what? Unless I destroy you with them. Come on. For ye showed kindness to all the children of Israel. Uh huh. And they came up out of Egypt. Go ahead. So the Kenites departed from among the Amalek. So they got they, they packed up and, and dipped. <laughs> we getting out of here, man. Go ahead. And Saul smote the Amalekites uh -huh. from Havaya until the comes to Shur. Go ahead. That is over against Egypt. Right. Now, we read before we get to verse 8. We told him to kill everything, right? Mm -hmm. Women and children, infant and suckling, you know, kill everybody, every king, everything, right? The, mm -hmm. the camel, the sheep, take them all out, right? That's right. Go ahead and read verse, nine, verse 8. And he took Agog, the king of the Amalekites, uh -huh. alive. Alive. Go ahead. And utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. Go ahead and read. But Saul and the people spared Agog. They the spared Agog. Go ahead. And the best of the sheep. And the best of the sheep. And of the oxen. And of the fatlings. In the lands and all that was good, uh -huh. and would not utterly destroy them. 
He would not, they would not utterly, utterly destroy them. Go ahead. But everything that was vile and refused, uh -huh. that they destroyed utterly. Go ahead. Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying. So immediately the word of the Lord came to Samuel. <laughs> Man, it, this dude is it, hard. Go ahead and read. It repented me that I have set up Saul to be king. Uh huh. For he has turned back from my follow from following me. Right. So I told him I told him to do something, and he spared Agag the king, and he kept the best of the fattening in the land. Mm -hmm. So immediately the word of the Lord came to Sam and told him it, it, it repented me for putting him in that position. Go ahead and read. And hath not performed my commandments. Have not performed my commandments. Go ahead. And it grieved him. Uh huh. And he cried unto the Lord all night. He cried unto the Lord all night. Skip down to verse 17. But we see the next day when Samuel got up, he went to go meet Saul. They told him he was in Gilgal. So we came to Saul. He found Saul in Gilgal. He talking to him. And Saul tells Samuel, Yeah, man, I did what the Lord said do. I, I, I obeyed. I kept the commandments like he said. And Samuel said, Man, what is this bleating in my ears that I hear? <clears throat> What are these animals out here going off in the background, man? Yeah. He's like, man, you know, we kept them, we kept the best that we gonna sacrifice and stuff like that. Sammy say, man, let me tell you what the Lord told me last night. Pick it up at verse 17, right? And, and, go ahead. and Samuel said, and Samuel said, when thou wast little in thine own sight, come on, was thou not made the head of tribes of Israel? When you was nobody, I made you the head of the tribes of Israel. Go ahead. And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel. Uh-huh. And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners. The Amalek Amalekites, Amalekites and fight against them until they be consumed. Right, so he told you to do something. He said, utterly destroy them until they be consumed. Go ahead. Wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the you Lord? You did not obey the voice of the Lord. Go ahead. But didst fly upon the spoil. Go ahead. And this evil in the sight of the Lord. Come on. And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the he voice said, of the Lord. He said, I have Lord. obeyed the voice of the Lord. Go ahead. And have gone the way which the Lord sent me. I did what he said, do. Go ahead. And have bought Agag the king of Amalek. And have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. Right, so he said, I did. I brought Agat Ag Ag Cain. I know, utterly destroyed Am Amalekite. But let's see what he's saying in 21. He immediately finna get the blame off him. Go ahead and read. But the people took up a spoil. But who is the king? Hmm. Agat the king, right? Mm -hmm. He told him to do something. That's just like running a house. If the Lord tell you to do something, get it done. That's right. You responsible. Mm -hmm. He said the people took up the spoil, got it off of him quick. <laughs> Like he wasn't even there. Sheep and oxen. Sheep and oxen, but the people took out the spoil. Sheep and oxen, go ahead. The chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed. Go ahead. The sacrifice unto the Lord thy God. So yeah. like that's supposed to be something uh, pleasant to the Lord. Oh man, we they took the sheep, man. They took the best so they could sacrifice it to the Lord. That's why they did it. The Lord don't care. If he say do it, do it. Go ahead and read, brother. And Samuel said, Uh huh. Have the Lord has great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices? That's right. Does he care about your uh, burnt offerings and sacrifices? Go ahead. As in obeying the voice as of the is, Lord. As is obeying the voice of the Lord. Go ahead. Behold. Uh huh. To obey is better than sacrifice. To obey is better than sacrifice. And to Keep hearken. your sacrifice. And to what? And to hearken uh -huh. to the fat of rain. That's right, brother. Go ahead and read. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. So you might as well be involved in that. Because rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. Go ahead. And stubbornness is as iniquity in adultery. That's right, brother. You're mm -hmm. you breaking the law. Mm -hmm. You might as well go ahead and take part in eating that pork sandwich. Mm -hmm. If you want to be rebellious, it just said that it is as iniquity and idolatry. What do they do with food on Thanksgiving? Mm -hmm. They sacrifice what? Food to idols. That's right. Mm -hmm. You might as well go ahead and get it, get it in with them. Mm -hmm. well. If you want, if you're gonna be rebellious, because he just said that. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness as iniquity and idolatry. But why, brother? Go ahead and read. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord. You have rejected the word of the Lord. Go ahead and read. He hath also rejected thee from being king. He has rejected you from being king. We just saw that. He the one set up king. He removed king. And this is Christ. He the one removed him. Conditions. You can't just do what you want to do. It's a condition set. Do what he say. Period. Now let's go over to... Deuteronomy. <laughs> I just make the lab rips in my thing about that word. <laughs> Bowie says it a certain way. <laughs> Ramen there. Go ahead. <laughs> Deuteronomy 3rd and 11. <laughs> Law, statutes, and commandments set before the children of Israel. Lord gonna tell them what it is they gotta do. When somebody tell you how to be successful, man, that's, a, that's, that's easy. I tell my son all the time, man. I say, when I was coming up, if my dad would have just told me what it is, 
I got to do in order not to get a whooping, I would have not got as many whoopings as I have got. That's right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you what it is that you got to do in order for you to be successful and not get whooped. All you got to do is listen to what I say. If you do what I tell you to do, you won't get no whooping. It's really simple, right? Mm -hmm. well, let's look at the example of what the Lord told the children of Israel. Pick it up, verse 11, and come on. For this commandment which I command thee this day, uh -huh. it is not hidden from thee. It is not hid from thee. Neither is it far off. Okay, so then we say that the word the word was near thee also, right? Then we went in the psalm and said the Lord is near thee also, right? So now we understand that it's all one and the same. It's the word that comes from the Lord, which is also the commandments. It's near you. Go ahead, read. It is not in heaven. It's not in heaven. That thou shouldest say, uh -huh. who shall go up for us to heaven? That's right. And bring it unto us. Uh-huh, because we saw it in the Romans. When they say, who, who shall go up to heaven? That is to bring Christ down. Or who shall go into the deep? That is to bring Christ up. That's right. Mm -hmm. But it just said, who shall neither is it beyond the sea? Or uh, I'm sorry, uh, 12, it is not in heaven. And now this all it's talking about is the word. You ain't got to go up this right here, sit in front of your face. In the hotel. When you're doing the do, it's there. That's right. When you're in the hospital. On the deathbed, it's there. When you're in prison, it's there. You just got to want to read it. Go ahead and read. Who shall go up from us to heaven and Who bring shall? it unto us? Come on. That we may hear it uh -huh. and do it. Go ahead. Neither is it beyond the sea. Uh -huh. That thou shouldest say, Who shall go up over the sea for us mm -hmm. and bring it unto us that we may hear it go ahead. and do it? <clears throat> But the word is very nigh unto us. But the word, which is also the commandment that we saw in 11, because it said, for this commandment, it's not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. So now in 14, it says, but the word is very nigh unto thee. That's all the word of the Lord, the commandment. What he tell you to do is sit right here in the book. Go ahead and read, brother. In thy mouth uh -huh. and in thy heart, Come on. that thou mayest do it. Go ahead and read. See, I have set before thee this day. I set before thee this day. Life and good. Life and good. And death. And evil. Death and evil, go ahead. And that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God. Love the Lord thy God. God. How are you going to love him? By keeping his commandments. Keep reading. To walk in his way. To walk in his way. And to keep his commandments. That's exactly right. And That's what you said, brother. To keep his commandments. That's right. Go ahead and read. And his statutes. Uh huh. And his judgments. Go ahead. That they that thou mayest live and multiply. That you may live and multiply. Go ahead. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in uh -huh. the land where thou goest to possess it. That's right. 17. But if thine heart turn away, uh huh. So that thou would not hear. But shall be drawn away and worship other gods uh -huh. and serve them. Go ahead. I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish, uh -huh. and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land. Go ahead. Whether thou passest over Jordan to go to the possess. Go ahead, read. I call heaven and earth to record this I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. Go ahead. That I have set before you life and death. I set before you life and death. What you supposed to do now? Blessing and curse. Go ahead. Therefore, choose life. Choose life. That both thou and thy seed may live. So what is he talking about? Now, if he's talking about you and your seed going to live, <clears throat> then today we'll see these Israelites from back in the day. They'll still be living now. If that's what he was talking about. He wasn't talking about that. He's talking about live another way. Let's go see how he's talking about living in a different way. Let's go to John 8 and 28. He wasn't talking about physically living. It's appointed to man to die once. And, if, and this was thousands of years ago. We know a man ain't living a thousand years. That's the case than what the Lord said. When you when you going to should have died that day, that's a lie. So he wasn't talking about, therefore choose life that thou, that both thou and they see may live. I'm talking about something else. Let's go see what it is. John chapter 28. John 8. I'm sorry, John 8. Thank you, bro. John 8, 28. Okay. Go ahead and read, bro. Then said Jesus unto them, uh -huh. When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, mm -hmm. then shall ye know that I am He. That's right. That I do nothing but of myself. Go ahead. But as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. That's right. And He that sent me is with me. He that sent me is with me. Go ahead. The Father hath not left me alone. Uh huh. For I do always those things that please Him. Go ahead. As He speaks these words, many believed on Him. Mm -hmm. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on Him. If ye continue in my word, if ye continue in my word, that's what we saw in Deuteronomy, right? Mm -hmm. Then are ye my disciples indeed. Then are ye my disciples indeed. But he told you, continue in my word, keep my commandment, you shall live. Drop down to verse 51. Let's see how they're going to live, bro. Verily, verily, I say unto you. Verily, verily, I say unto you. If a man keep my saying. If a man keep my what? My saying. My saying, go ahead. He shall never see death. That was a long prophecy right there when he told him in Deuteronomy. He was telling him you're going to have everlasting life. That's right. That's how you and your seed going to live. Everlasting life. 
So you got to keep it saying. That's how you believe on him. For God so loved the word that he gave his only begotten son, whosoever believeth on him or keep his word <clears throat> should not perish but have everlasting life. Right. That's what it's talking about, brother and sister. Isaiah 31. Isaiah 31. Pick it up at verse 1. This time I'm gonna children of Israel, they out of Egypt. You know what I'm saying? And they, they trying to go, they want to go back. They still got their mind set on Egypt. But the Lord taking issue with that. That's how it's gonna be when 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 the ones that are in the flesh and the Lord come back to get them out. You know, the ones who don't get to the wilderness, when the Lord get back, he gathers them, take them out to the wilderness, they still gonna be looking for pigs. Mm -hmm. Cook some barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> still trying to go back to the ways of Egypt, man. And that's what's taking place here. They still want to go back to Egypt. So the Lord got a controversy, a problem with that. 31 and verse 1. And come on. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for Woe help. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. Go ahead. And stay on the horses uh, uh -huh. and trust in chariots. Go ahead. Because they are many. Uh -huh. And then horsemen, because they are very strong. Go ahead. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel. That's right. Neither seek. Neither seek the Lord. That's right, and that's the problem today. A lot of people, when you tell them about keeping the law, standing commandment, they rather stay caught up in what's going on <coughs> around them. They see the, they see the, 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 I guess the material things that in front of them, mm -hmm. and they pleased by that. Mm -hmm. I got a friend that tell me he say, man, I, I got a friend of mine that's in the, that's in the Sunday church, man. But they, I talked to him about the tree, but he don't want to come to the tree <laughs> because all this stuff that he got, he think he being blessed by being in the prosperity church. You know, he got the big house, the fancy cars and all that. And he thinking that that's what's blessing him. So they don't want to leave that and follow the God in this book. They'd rather, rather follow man or they'd rather keep that Egypt mentality. Because they don't have to keep commandments in their son. That's right, bro. They don't got to keep the commandments. Go ahead and read. <laughs> Two. Yet he also is wise. Yet he also is wise. And will bring evil. Uh-huh. And will not call back his words. That's right. But will arise against the house of the evildoers. He will arise against the house of the evildoers. Go ahead. And against the help of them that work iniquity. Uh-huh. Now the Egyptians are men. Go ahead. And not God. And their horses flesh. And not spirit. Right. So you worshiping something that ain't got nothing to it. You worship, worshiping something vain. They're not spirit. They're not God. Go ahead. When the Lord shall stretch out his hand, uh -huh. both he that helpeth shall fall. That's right. And he that is hoping shall fall down. That's right. And they all shall fail together. Yes, sir. So now let's go to Jeremiah 44 and let's look at the result of this. Jeremiah chapter 44. They was doing it in the land where they was at too. Worship these other gods. And some people set their face to go down to Egypt. So the Lord consumed the ones in the land, and he also went and got the ones that was in Egypt. You ain't getting away. When you say do something, you're going to do it, whether you like it or not. That's right. I'm, I remember my dad, when I used to get a whooping, sometimes he'd bust my side of my head, man, and I'd be like, and the first thing come out of his mouth, do as I say it. I'd be like, man, you say, that sounds so like... like I'm a slave. You know what I'm saying? Do as I say it. But, but now I see... I mean, I'm not saying that he God, but I'm just saying it's that simple. Right. Just do as I say it. God said the same thing. That's it. Do as I say it. Simple. Mm -hmm. You won't get whooped. All you gotta do is do as I say it. Don't open your mouth. Don't ask no questions. If I'm wrong, I'll be done. Do as I say it. Oh, yeah. Jeremiah 44. Right? Go ahead and read. Verse 1. Yeah, verse 1. Come on. The word that came to Jeremiah concerning all the Jews which dwell in the land of Egypt. Uh-huh. Which dwell at Migdal. Which dwell in the land of Egypt and Migdal. So now the Lord is speaking to Jeremiah. Go ahead. In that top of us. Uh-huh. In that north. And in the country of Pathros, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, uh -huh. the God of Israel. Go ahead. Ye have seen all the evil that I have brought upon Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And upon all the city of Judah. And behold, this day they are desolation. Right. So no I didn't destroy it. I didn't destroy it. Judah, you done seen what I done did. No man dwell there yet. So we're talking to the ones that are dwelling in the land of Egypt, Migdal, Tapanese, and now in the country of Pathos. So uh, Jeremiah tell them, you've seen what the Lord has done now. Go ahead and read. Because of their wickedness which they have committed to provoke me to anger. Uh-huh. That they went to burn incense and to serve other gods. That's right. Whom they knew not. Come on. Neither they, ye, nor your fathers. Uh huh. Howbeit I send unto you all my servants the prophets. Go ahead. Rising early and sending them, saying, Oh, do not this abominable thing 
that I hate. And we're doing the same thing today. Mm -hmm. Do not this abominable thing that the Lord hates. That's right. Them incense, what they was doing, they were taking them incense, they were burning them to other God. Mm -hmm. That's what them was for. They was taking them incense and burning those, those fragrances to other gods. Go ahead and read. But they hearken not. They ain't listen. They still nor incline their ear to turn from their wickedness. Uh -huh. To burn no incense unto other gods. That's right. They kept on burning them incense to other gods. So what had to take place, brother? Wherefore my fury and my anger was poured forth. Uh -huh. And was kindled in the cities of Judah. Uh -huh. And in the streets of Jerusalem. Go ahead. And they are all wasted, and they are wasted come on. desolate. Go ahead. As at this day. As at this day. Drop down to verse 11 and come on. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Uh -huh. Behold, I will set my face against you for evil. Go ahead. And to cut all cut off all Judah. Go ahead. And I will take the remnant, the remnant of Judah that have set their faces to go into the land of Egypt. Right, so now he's gonna get the ones that went into the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. To sojourn there. To sojourn there, go ahead. And they shall all be consumed. They're gonna all be consumed. And fall in the land of Egypt. Fall in the land of Egypt. Go ahead. They shall even be consumed by the sword and by the famine. Uh-huh. And they shall die. Go ahead. From the least even unto the greatest. Uh-huh. By the sword and by the famine. And they shall be in an ex excretion. 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 No, I'm sorry, excretion. You're right. Excretion. Excretion right. right. in an astonishment. Uh-huh. And a curse and a reproach. Go ahead. What are you gonna do? For I will punish them uh -huh. that dwell in the land of Egypt. As I have punished Jerusalem by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence. Go ahead. So that none of the remnant of Judah, which are going into the land of Egypt to sojourn there, shall escape or remain. Uh -huh. That they should return into the land of Judah, to the which they have a desire to return dwell there. That's right. So that's even, even they, they trying to go back into Egypt, back into their other gods, trying to keep themselves occupied with the things that go against the God of the book. They'd rather serve and keep the things of the world. But what happened when Lot was told to get out of Sodom and Gomorrah? His wife wasn't supposed to look back, was she? In this case, they're doing the same thing. They're trying to go back. Lord destroyed her as a single, as an individual. But the Lord knocking them off as a whole. What are we at, 23? We had a 14. Go ahead. For none shall return, but such as shall escape. All right, skip out of verse 23 and go ahead. Why you got to do this, brother? Because you have burned incense. Because you have burned incense. And because you have sinned against the Lord. You have sinned against the Lord. Go ahead. And have not obeyed the voice of the Lord. Uh-huh. Nor walked in his law. Go ahead. Nor in his statutes. Nor in his testimonies. Mm-hmm. Therefore, this evil has happened unto you. Go ahead. As at this day. Go ahead. Moreover, Jeremiah said unto all the people, and to all the women, to the word of the Lord, all Judea, mm -hmm. that are that are in the land of Egypt. Uh -huh. Everybody that's in the land of Egypt, hear the word of the Lord. Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, uh -huh. the God of Israel, saying, Ye and your wives have both spoken with your mouth. Right, you've spoken your mouth. What he's talking about is, previously or earlier in chapter, in verse 16 and 17 and stuff like that, they told Jeremiah, they said, man, we're not doing nothing. We're going to serve the queen of heaven. Because <clears throat> every time we serve the queen of heaven, don't nothing happen to us. The famine ain't on us. We ain't sick. We getting blessed, everything going good, so we gonna serve that God. We ain't gonna come back and serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's what they thinking today. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Same thing in the prosperity churches. Mm -hmm. And they good with it. They getting stuff. That's right. They are getting physical things, things that pertain to the flesh. That's why they don't want to give it up. But at the end of the day, the Lord gonna get the final say. Go ahead, read. I'll start over there. Ye and your wives have both spoken with your mouths uh -huh. and fulfilled with your hands, saying, right. We will surely perform our vows that we have vowed to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven. Y'all see that? Mm. We're going to burn our incense to the Queen of Heaven. We're going to do exactly what we promised we're going to do. We ain't paying attention to this God. Go ahead, read, bro. And to pour our drink offerings into her. Uh huh. Ye will surely accomplish your vow. Go ahead. And surely perform your vow. Uh huh. Therefore, hear ye the word of the Lord. Go ahead. All Judah that dwell in the land of Egypt, uh -huh. behold, I have sworn by my great name, saith the Lord, hmm. that my name shall no more be named in the mouth of any man of Judah wow. in all the land of Egypt, hmm. saying, The Lord God liveth. Go ahead. Behold, I will watch over them for evil. He will watch over them for evil. So he's going to make sure nothing but destruction takes place on his people. And not for good. And not for good. Go ahead. And all the men of Judah that are in the land of Egypt uh -huh. shall be consumed by the sword and by the famine until there be an end of them. Wow. Now drop down to verse uh, 29 and come on. 
And this shall be a sign unto you, saith the Lord, uh -huh. that I will punish you in this place. That's right. That ye may know that my words, my shall, words. shall surely stand against you for evil. That's right. Keeping his word, brother and sister. Keeping his word. We see that he the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, but he just said that my words shall surely stand. Whatever he tells you to do, you got to do it. If you don't do it, there is a condition or there is a, uh, uh, what the word I'm looking for? You don't do what he said? Consequence? Consequence. That's a number. That's a consequence. <clears throat> for being disobedient. Mm -hmm. Going to Luke 17. You're on the home stretch. <laughs> Luke 17. Ain't nothing changed. Ain't nothing changed, brother and sister. You mm -hmm. still got wicked people mm -hmm. today, just like it was back then. Mm -hmm. You got disobedient people that's going against the word of the Lord just like then. The Bible tell you what's I'm gonna say in Ecclesiastes. Ain't nothing on the sun. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It, it's a remnant that's keeping the law of standing commandments now. Just like even with Noah. It was like eight people. You know what I'm saying? But he was found righteous in the eyes of the Lord, that the Lord saved them. So pick it up at St. Luke 17. In verse 22, and he said unto the disciples, uh -huh. The days will come when ye shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, uh -huh. and ye shall not see it. Go ahead. And they shall say to you, See here, or see there, go not after them, nor follow them. Mm -hmm. For as the lightning that lighteneth out of the one part under heaven shineth unto the other part under heaven, Go ahead. so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. But first must, but first must he suffer many things. And be rejected of this generation. You reject it right now. Go ahead, brother. <clears throat> and as it was in the days of Noah, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. So in the days of the Son of Man, it's gonna be the same way. All the wickedness that covered the earth, and the Lord had to clean it out. The same thing going on right now. So ain't nothing new. So go ahead. Go to uh, what's the name, bro? Uh, First Peter. Let's look at that. Nothing new, bro. The same thing. So first Peter three. So the tattoos and all the stuff they doing. None of them. Mm -hmm. First Peter three. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. First Peter chapter three, brother. Let's look and see how what it was that was done back in the day during the time of of Noah. We could go into Genesis and look at the long drawn out. But we basically have a mindset, I mean, an understanding of what took place during the time of all, right? So let's just sum it up right quick. First Peter 3 and 18, what does it say, brother? For Christ also hath once suffered for sins. Uh-huh. The just for the unjust. The just for the unjust, go ahead. That he might bring us to God. Uh-huh. Being put to death in the flesh. Go ahead. But quickened by the Spirit. Go ahead. By which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. Uh-huh. Which sometime were disobedient. Go ahead. But once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah. Uh huh. While the ark was in preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. Eight souls were saved by water. So have y'all read anywhere in the Bible? Wow. That Noah them was saved or sank, uh, 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 baptized inside the boat? Mm -mm -mm. What are you talking about? Because just like they were saved by water, you're going to be saved by water too. Mm -hmm. what, is this, what are you talking about? Let's go to Ephesians 5 and look at it. Ephesians 5 and look at it. Because I haven't seen nowhere in the scripture where they got baptized inside the boat. And I understand that they weren't in the water when the earth got flooded. So what is it that he's talking about that they were saved by water? Let's go see Ephesians 5. And verse 24. Go ahead, brother. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, as the church is subject unto Christ, go ahead. So let the wives be to their own husbands. That's, and wife, that's right. Come on, husbands, love your wives. Husband, love your wife. Even as Christ also loved the church. That's right. And gave himself for. And gave himself for. That means you got to go there, she might. Because I'm going to make sure y'all see that now. A lot of people in the Sunday church, especially the old Pentecostal churches, boy, they beat women over the head with this. In 24, what did he say? Therefore, as uh, uh, 23, for the husband is the head of the wife. Now, the Israelite brothers use this too and try to get away with their role. We just learning something on the way to learn something because this right here, if it's not used wisely, will cause marriages to end up in divorce. Mm -hmm. You understand, brothers and mm -hmm. sisters? Make sure you understand the context of what it's saying when it say, wives, submit yourselves unto your husband. Right before that, it says, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. 
So that means both of y'all got to get up on each other and support each other. That's right. We understand that, right, brother and sister? That's right. Because I know a lot of marriage, especially my parents. You know, married for a long time. But this was something that ran rapid. This verse ran very strong in the household. You know, you got to submit yourself to your husband. I, and I, I was just, I, even as a kid, I, I, I thought about it, I was like, is, is that it? Like, is the Lord like, like that for real? Like, they just got to submit to us? And we don't got to do nothing? But as you get old, you start reading, and you got to love your wife as Christ loved the church. He died for the church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, he gave his life. Mm -hmm. That means he had to practice humility. Because mm -hmm. you die, I mean, that's a hard pill to swallow, man. Yes. Everybody talk that now. Yeah, I die for you, baby. In the situation, hey, I, I, I don't know. I would like to do that. You know what I'm saying? I'm quite sure all of us would like to do that. You know what I'm saying? But you in the flesh, you don't know what will happen when you get in that situation. But the book tells you, husband, love your wife, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Why, brother 26? That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. That's how Noah then was set, a, set aside. That's how they got clean by the word. That's right. That's what it was, brothers and sisters. <clears throat> By the word of God. That, that's what it was. They didn't go in the, the ark and get baptized. The Lord gave them a commandment to do something, and he did it. What did he tell them to do? Build the ark. I'm going to send rain. Mm -hmm. He told the people, come on in. They laughed and joked. We ain't never saw rain. Ain't never going to be no rain. What's going on today? You being sanctified by the word. The simple fact that you keeping the Sabbath day. You being sanctified by the word. Prepare for the holy days, the feast day. You being sanctified by the word. That's all he said, brothers. It was the word of God that sanctified them. And they were washed. Wash another water by the word. That's how they was clean, brothers and sisters. So let's go into Revelation 22. Yeah, finish that verse one, brother. Go ahead. That he might present it to himself a glorious church. That he might present it to himself a glorious church. Not having spot, spot uh -huh. or wrinkle. Or wrinkle, go ahead. Any such thing. Uh -huh. but that it should be holy and without blemish. Why should it be like that, brother? Because this lamb, what the lamb presented before the father like that? That's right. So that's how the church got to be presented. You can't be presented as a sissy. <laughs> you can't be presented like that. You can't. Be presented with a, a mindset just to uh, 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 allow anything to take place. I'm cool with it. Just don't come my way. You can't do that. You got to be sanctified by the word. You got to be set apart. That's the mindset you got to have. If the church is going to be before him blameless, you got to be before him blameless. The same exact way. That's how he went before the Father. He was a prototype for us. So now let's go to Revelation 22, bro.